Good morning everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the current affairs. For mobile optimized ebooks, please install GK Today Academy app. You can attempt the quiz in this app and you can read detailed explanation. For regular updates, please join our telegram channel. The link is given in the description box. We have started a new channel Civils Academy. You can subscribe to it if you find it relevant. For hard copy books, you can visit our website gktbooks.com. Now let's start. Which is the only country other than India to pass the miscarriage bereavement leave law. So this country is New Zealand and other than India, it is the only country to pass such law. Now first thing first, what is the objective of this legislation? This will provide employees three day leave when a pregnancy ends with a stillbirth. Now what is the meaning of this term stillbirth? Stillbirth is a death or loss of a baby before or during delivery. So both miscarriage and stillbirth describe the pregnancy loss. Now New Zealand passed a legislation and that is why it was in use. So far India and New Zealand are the only country which have such legislation. What is the name of our law which provide maternity benefits? It is MBA that is Maternity Benefit Act and it was amended in 27. Now New Zealand is also a part of Five Eyes Alliance. So this is an intelligence sharing alliance of New Zealand, Australia, US, Canada and UK. Recently, US was in use because India US Special Forces conducted Vajra Prahar. So, this is a joint exercise and it was conducted in Baklo. This place is in Himachal Pradesh. Name of exercises Vajra Prahar. Apart from that, few other exercises were in use. One such exercise is Aces Meet. So, Pakistan is going to conduct this exercise and it is Air Force exercise. In addition to that, recently India and Madagascar, that means the navies of India and Madagascar conducted a joint patrolling in the EEZ of Madagascar. What is EEZ? It is Exclusive Economic Zone. Apart from that, one more naval exercise was in use and it is La Pirose. So this is a French naval exercise and Indian Navy is going to take part in this exercise. In fact, all the Quad members are going to take part in this. Quad is Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. Four countries are the member Australia, India, USA and Japan. Japan is the host of Tokyo Olympic Games and recently a torch relay was started from Japan. Which institution releases the annual flagship report World Economic Outlook? So this is released annually by IMF. This time it is going to be released on 6th of April. Of course date is not important. So name of report is World Economic Outlook. It is released by IMF that is International Monetary Fund. IMF and World Bank are known as Bretton Wood institutions. Apart from that, few other reports were in use. One is World Development Report. So this is released by World Bank. Theme is Data for Better Lives. So this is the first World Development Report which focused mainly on the role of data for the development. Apart from that, recently one more report was in use and it is Investment Opportunities in India's Health Sector. And this is a report by Neeti Ayo. In addition to that recently Global Wind Report was also in use and it is a report by Global Wind Energy Council. What is ever given? So it is the name of cargo ship. Recently it was in use because it was stuck in the Swage Canal. Now we have already covered this entire issue in our previous lecture. So please check that. From exam perspective you should know the geographical location of Swage Canal and it is a man-made canal. Second thing is that it divides continental Africa from Sinai Peninsula. Now, recently one more event related to ship was in use and Norway is going to construct world's first ship tunnel. So which country is going to construct world's first ship tunnel? This country is Norway. Which state has recommended a judicial inquiry against the central agencies including ED? So next question is which state has recommended a judicial inquiry against the central agencies including ED. So Kerala government has decided to recommend a judicial inquiry against the central agencies. Actually this entire issue is in the backdrop of gold smuggling case. You need not to go into too much details because that is not that much important from exam perspective. But the entire scenario is that as per Kerala government the central authorities are derailing the investigation in gold smuggling case. So that is why the state government of Kerala has decided to appoint K.V. Mohan Commission for Judicial Investigation. And K. 
के वी मोहन इज रिटायर्ड जज अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट रिसेंटली वन मोर कमेटी वॉज इन न्यूज एंड इट इज एच आर नगेंद्रा कमेटी सो दिस कमेटी वॉज इन न्यूज एज इट हैज बीन सेटअप बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आयुष बाय आयुष मिनिस्ट्री सेटअप दिस कमेटी टू एक्सप्लोर पोटेंशियल ऑफ योगा एज ए प्रोडक्टिविटी एनहांसिंग टूल दैट मीन्स टू एक्सप्लोर टू वट एक्सटेंट योगा कैन हेल्प यू इन एनहांसिंग और इम्प्रूविंग योर प्रोडक्टिविटी सो दिस काउंसिल और दिस कमेटी विल बी हेडेड बाई एच आर नगेंद्रा हु हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज अ चेयरपर्सन ऑफ एयरपोर्ट अथोरिटी ऑफ इंडिया सो मिस्टर संजीव कुमार हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज अ चेयरपर्सन ऑफ ए ए आई दैट इज एयरपोर्ट अथोरिटी ऑफ इंडिया अपार्ट फ्रॉम हिम फ्यू अदर अपॉइंटमेंट्स फॉर इन न्यूज Mr Saurabh Garg has been appointed as the CEO of UIDAI that is Unique Identification Authority of India it is under MEITY that is Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology Mr Sanjeev Kumar has been appointed as the chairperson of AAI that is Airport Authority of India Mr Atish Chandra has been appointed as the CMD of Food Corporation of India now answer in comment box FCI is under which union ministry apart from him recently Mukhmeet Singh Bhatia has been appointed as the new dg of esic that is employees state insurance corporation esic is under ministry of labor and employment on the other hand prashant kumar singh has been appointed as a ceo of government e marketplace government e marketplace is a special purpose vehicle for procurement in ministry of commerce so in one appointment question we have covered five questions apart from him recently one more personality was in news and he is justice nv ramanna So answer in comment box why Justice N V Ramanna was in news recently. SEBI modified the requirement to formulate dividend distribution policy by top 500 listed companies to how many companies? Now top 1000 companies will be covered. What is the entire issue? See first thing first what is dividend? So suppose you invest your money in some company and that company earned profit. So it is going to distribute some part of that profit to its stakeholders or to its shareholders this is dividend so technically dividend is a distribution of profit by a corporation to its shareholders and the amount if not given back is usually reinvested in the business now is it mandatory to give dividend every year no it is not mandatory so why this issue was in news because now the top 1000 listed companies need to properly formulate the dividend distribution policy previously these rules were applicable to only top 500 companies top 500 listed companies now these rules will be applicable to top 1000 listed companies sebi that is securities and exchange board of india is the market regulator that means stock market regulator for companies we have companies act of 2013 and it is governed by mca that is ministry of corporate affairs in fact csr is also a part of the companies act and india is the first country in the world to have a law regarding csr what is csr it is corporate social responsibility now recently this mca that is ministry of corporate affairs was also in news because of iep fa application or mobile app what is this iep fa it is investor education and protection fund authority so as the name suggests it is for the education and protection of investor recently this was launched and it was launched by nirmala sitaraman nirmala sitaraman is our present finance minister she also holds the portfolio of mca and this iep fa is an initiative by ministry of corporate affairs which legendary singer won the maharashtra bhushan award this is the highest state honor by the state government of maharashtra so asha bhosle won this maharashtra bhushan award for 2020 and this is the highest honor by state government of maharashtra it is given to recognize the outstanding achievements of eminent personalities and it was instituted in 1996 who has been selected as ey entrepreneur of year 2020 so mr harsh mariwala has been selected as ey entrepreneur for 2020 he is the chairperson of mariko and mariko is a consumer goods company apart from him pratap chandra reddy the executive chairperson of apollo hospitals was given the lifetime achievement award byju ravindran was given the award for business transformation and pius bansal of lenskart was given the and pius bansal of lenskart was awarded in the startup categories so lifetime achievement award was given to the chairperson of apollo hospitals business transformation award was given to the chairperson of byju and in startup category the award was given to the pius bansal of lenskart
the sub web portal is associated with which union ministry so it is associated to ministry of education present education ministry is ramesh pokhrel nishank recently this portal was in news because the education minister released 100 plus comic book created by the teachers and students of cbsc schools so thisa is online learning portal what is the full form of thisa it is digital infrastructure for school education and this is an initiative by ncert what is ncert it is national council of educational research and training and this ncert is under ministry of education now recently education minister was also in news as he inaugurated anandam and this was inaugurated at iim jammu so what is this anandam it is the center for happiness what is the name of india's first earth observation satellite which is to be placed in geosynchronous transfer orbit so the name of the satellite is gist1 it is india's first earth observation satellite which will be placed in geosynchronous transfer orbit so the name of satellite is gsat1 it will be launched through gslv f10 gslv stands for geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle gisat stands for geo imaging satellite so this is going to be earth observation satellite and this is india's first earth observation satellite that will be placed in geosynchronous transfer orbit it will be done by isro isro is our space research organization that is indian space research organization it is under dos that is department of space the headquarters of isro is in bengaluru and presently dr k sivan is the chief of isro which country has proposed retaliatory trade actions against india for imposing equalization levy on e-commerce companies now before that let me give you the background of this entire story see a lot of digital companies are from usa for example google facebook amazon all these companies are from usa now since most of these companies are from usa and these are digital companies so they do not have to pay tax in our country they pay tax in their home country home country in the sense that the country where the headquarters of these companies is situated so in order to solve this issue india started the concept of equalization levy this levy or this taxation was to be imposed on those e-commerce companies which are not paying tax in india since most of these companies are from usa now usa is planning a retaliatory trade action against india so first thing first what is equalization levy it is a direct tax and it is applicable on those companies or on those entities which are non resident service provider so as of now online advertisement is covered as a part of equalization levy and the approximate rate is i think 6 percentage please check it so this was the entire issue now recently usa was also in news as usa added india to the list of countries which are affected by asf what is asf it is african swine fever so what will be its impact now since usa has added india into the list of countries which are affected by african swine fever therefore it has imposed restrictions on the import of pork and pork products from india so that so this is how it is going to impact our exports of pork and pork products to usa usa was also in news because recently india sent the first consignment of red rice to usa this red rice is grown in assam in brahmaputra valley and this rice is rich in iron it is also known as bao dhan recently assam was also in news because of numaligarh refinery so why this refinery was in news first thing first this is a refinery in assam recently it was in news as bpcl that is bharat petroleum corporation limited sold its entire stakes of 61.5 percentages from this refinery so bpcl decided to exit from this refinery by selling its stakes so in in question they may ask that numaligarh refinery is in which state of india second probable question is bpcl sold how much stakes so it sold its entire stakes now your homework is to find out who are the other stakeholders in this numaligarh refinery as per the recent report of iucn what is the status of smaller lighter african forest elephant so first thing first what is iucn it is international union for conservation of nature it usually publish a red list of species and as per the recent assessment the two species of elephants in africa are facing problem because of the 
poaching and because of human encroachment. So as per this assessment, the savanna elephant is in endangered category and the smaller lighter forest elephant is in critically endangered category. IUCN is International Union for Conservation of Nature. This was established in 1948. Right now, it has the observer status in United Nations. The headquarters of IUCN is in Gland in Switzerland. Heel COVID, which was in news recently, is a nationwide trial to be implemented in which country? So this is related to UK. UK is United Kingdom. So what is Heel COVID? It is helping to alleviate the longer term consequences of COVID-19. So as the name suggests, it is an initiative to alleviate the long term consequences of COVID-19. So this is a national drug trial to be conducted by UK for the selection of safe and existing drugs which are already available in the market in order to find the effective treatment. UK was also in use as it is the host of G7 summit. It was also in use as it is the host of COP26. COP26 is related to United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change. So this is related to environment. COP stands for Conference of Parties. Now in the context of environment, recently another summit was in use and it is two-day climate summit. So this is a climate summit of world leaders and USA is going to host this two-day climate summit of world leaders and it will be organized on the occasion of Earth Day. Earth Day is on 22nd of April. For this summit, Indian Prime Minister is also invited. Now recently, US and UK were also in news as they proposed that the democratic countries in the world should look for the alternatives of BRI of China. What is BRI? It is Belt and Road Initiative. So it is infrastructure initiative by China. Now US and UK has proposed that the democratic countries should look for the alternatives of BRI. Recently China was also in news as it has signed a deal with Iran. So this is a 25 years deal worth 400 billion dollars. So as per this agreement China is going to invest 400 billion dollars in Iran. Recently China was also in news because of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a special administrative region of China. So why it was in news? Because recently China reduced the share of elected representatives in Hong Kong legislation. So previously the number was high. Now China has reduced it and now only 20 out of 90 members will be directly elected. So this was done to increase the grip of China over Hong Kong. Who was Kamlesh Chandra Chakrabarti? So he was the former deputy governor of RBI. Recently he was in news because he passed away. What is RBI? It is Reserve Bank of India. Apart from him, recently few other personalities were in news. So recently Beverly Clary passed away. She was from US and she was well known children's author. She passed away recently. In addition to her, recently actor Rajni Kant was also in news as he has been selected for 51st Dada Saheb Falke Award. So this award is given for his outstanding contribution to the Indian cinema. In addition to him, recently Soma Mondal was also in news. Soma Mondal is the current chairperson of SALE. SALE is Steel Authority of India Limited. Now she has been appointed as the new chairperson of SCOPE. What is SCOPE? SCOPE stands for Standing Conference of Public Enterprises. So now she has been appointed as the new chairperson of Standing Conference of Public Enterprises. So we covered four names. Kamlesh Chandra Chakrabarti, Beverly Clary, Rajni Kant and Soma Mondal. Which ministry has mandated companies to disclose their investment in cryptocurrencies? So it is simple and logical question. Companies are regulated by Companies Act of 2013 and this act is under the domain of MCA that is Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Now Ministry of Corporate Affairs has made amendments in the Companies Act and therefore it is mandatory to disclose the investment of companies in cryptocurrencies and their expenditure in the CSR that is Corporate Social Responsibility and Benami Properties. Now please note that India is the first country in world to legislate Corporate Social Responsibilities and this is being done through Companies Act of 2013. Now Companies Act of 2013 was also in use because of NCLT that is National Company Law Tribunal. So this is a adjudication body and it has been 
constituted as per the provisions of Companies Act of 2030. So why this NCLT was in use? Recently, Supreme Court uphold the decision of Tata Sons to remove Cyrus Mistry as chairperson. So what is this entire story? Long story short, Cyrus Mistry was removed as chairperson and later he was removed from the board of company. So he approached NCLT, then the decision of NCLT was challenged in NCLAT. What is NCLAT? It is National Company Law Appellate Tribunal. And then the decision of NCLAT was challenged in higher courts and the final decision was given by Supreme Court recently. So what Supreme Court said? This NCLAT reinstated Cyrus Mystery on the Tata Sons board. That means it said that the removal of Cyrus Mystery was not correct. However, now as per the recent judgment of Supreme Court, the decision of NCLAT has been set aside. That means it is no longer applicable and Supreme Court has overturned its decision. In simplest term, it said that Tata Sons removed Cyrus Mystery and it uphold the decision of Tata Sons to remove him from the board and from the chairperson. So in exam, they may ask you that Cyrus Mystery is associated to which entity or NCLAT are constituted as per the provisions of which law. Which armed force has decided to employ retired combat dogs as therapy dogs. So this has been done by ITBP. ITBP is Indo-Tibetan Border Police. So for the first time, retired dogs will be used as therapy dogs. Apart from that, they will also be used in the treatment of soldiers, specially abled children. So this is the first time in our country that retired dogs are being used to serve the soldiers. ITBP is part of CAPF. CAPF are Central Armed Police Forces. They are under MHA. That is Ministry of Home Affairs. Recently, Home Minister launched Ayushman CAPF. So it is a health scheme for CAPF members. For this it has collaborated with NHA, that is National Health Authority. Where is the Indo-South Korean Friendship Park? So recently this park was in news and it has been constructed in New Delhi, Kent. So this park has been constructed to commemorate the contribution of Indian peacekeeping forces during the Korean War of 1950-53. Recently it was jointly inaugurated by the defense ministers of both countries. The Indian Prime Minister launched the Swan Jayanti Scholarship for the youth of which country? So, Prime Minister of India is on the official visit of Bangladesh. As a part of this initiative, he announced Swan Jayanti Scholarship for the youth of Bangladesh. This is a scholarship which will be provided by DST, that is Department of Science and Technology of India. DST is under Ministry of Science and Technology. Now, please note that Bangladesh is celebrating 50 years of its independence. Apart from that, Bangladesh is also celebrating 100 years or 100th birth anniversary of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman is considered as the founding father of Bangladesh. Presently, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh is Sheikh Hasina and she is the daughter of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Name of her party is Awami League. So this time it is very significant for Bangladesh because A. It is 50 years of independence. B. They are celebrating 100th birth anniversary of their founding father. On this occasion, a museum was also inaugurated. And this museum was inaugurated at the Banga Bandhu International Conference Center in Dhaka. So this museum has digital exhibition of Mahatma Gandhiji and Banga Bandhu. Sheikh Bujimur Rahman is popularly known as Banga Bandhu. Present Science and Technology Minister is Dr. Harshwadhan. Recently he was in news as he participated in first ever World Immunization and Logistics Summit. Now in the context of science, one more event was in news and it is AIM Prime. So to support the science-based startup companies, this initiative has been launched. AIM stands for Atal Innovation Mission and Prime stands for Program for Researchers on Innovation, Market Readiness and Entrepreneurship. So you just need to remember that it is an initiative by Atal Innovation Mission. Atal Innovation Mission is a part of Steps by Niti Ayo. Which fintech company has launched distributor to retailer finance. So this is an initiative by Bharat Pay. Bharat Pay has recently launched a new lending product and the name is D2R Finance that is distributor to retailer finance. So the objective is to provide more liquidity to the distributors, to the wholesalers, traders and to the dealers. 
Objective is to focus on the small and medium enterprises. It is going to offer collateral free loans up to Rs. 50 lakh for a period of 7 to 30 days at lower interest rate. So, couple of important points. First, it is for small and medium enterprises. Second thing is that it is going to be collateral free loan. Third thing, interest rate is going to be little bit lower. And fourth thing is that it is for smaller period. That means from 7 to 30 days. Apart from this news, few other financial events were in news. First is capital infusion in PSB. PSB stands for public sector banks. So government has announced that it is going to invest or it is going to infuse 14,500 crore rupees in four PSB. So this is important for banking aspirants. Now, which are these four banks? First is CBI, that is Central Bank of India. Second is Indian Overseas Bank. Third is Bank of India. And fourth is Yuko. Apart from that, one more event was related to banking sector and it is an agreement between State Bank of India and JBIC. What is JBIC? It is Japan Bank for International Cooperation. So these two signed an agreement and as per this, SBI has raised 1 billion from JBIC. So it has raised 1 billion dollars from JBIC. Next question is, new bacteria found in International Space Station has been named after which Indian scientist? So, it has been named after Ajmal Khan. Ajmal Khan is a renowned Indian scientist and his specialization is in biodiversity. So, the name of this strain is Methylobacterium Azmali. It is named after Ajmal Khan and it has been found in and it has been discovered at ISS. What is ISS? It is International Space Station. So, at International Space Station, four strains of bacteria have been discovered. And one of them is given the name Methylobacterium Azmali. Now, ISS is a collaboration of different space agencies. To be specific, it is a collaboration between five space agencies. These five space agencies are NASA. NASA is the space agency of USA. Roscosmos, it is the space agency of Russia. JAXA, it is the space agency of Japan. ESA, that is the European Space Agency. And last one is CSA, that is Canadian Space Agency. So it is a collaboration of five space agencies. Now, this ISS is in LEO, that is low earth orbit, and it is habitable artificial satellite. Next question is, which country is to play the host to the Asian Football Confederation Women's Asian Cup of 2022? So, India is going to be the host for this tournament. And for this tournament, D.Y. Patel Stadium in Navi Mumbai, a stadium in Ahmedabad and in Bhuvneshwar are going to be the host for this tournament. It is women's football competition. It will be organized in February next year. So it is Asian Football Confederation Tournament and it is a Women's Asia Cup. Now, apart from this sport event, two other events were in news. One is related to IPL, that is a cricket tournament. IPL stands for Indian Premier League. It is a cricket tournament and it is going to be organized in April month. It is going to start from 9th of April. Recently, why this IPL was in news? Because Upstokes is going to be the official partner for IPL 2021. Who is the organizer for IPL? It is BCCI. Current BCCI president is Saurabh Ganguly. So this was related to cricket. Another event is related to Bahrain Grand Prix. So Lewis Hamilton won this 2021 Bahrain Grand Prix. He is a driver from Mercedes. Next question is, what is the new milestone reached by the Jal Jeevan Mission scheme across the country as on 31st of March 2021? So it is 4 crore. That means so far it has provided 4 crore tap water connections to the rural households. Name of initiative is Jal Jeevan Mission. It was announced in 2019 and objective is to provide tap water supply to the every rural home by 2024. So far, that means till 31st of March 2021, it has achieved the target of 4 crore tap water connections to the rural households. Now, Goa is the first state in our country to achieve the milestone of 100% tap water supply. So, Jal Jeevan Mission is an initiative of Jal Shakti Ministry. Recently, on 22nd of March, World Water Day was celebrated and the theme of this World Water Day was valuing water. On this occasion, that means on the occasion of World Water Day, Prime Minister announced Catch the Rain campaign. So the objective of this campaign is to promote 
water conservation and it is an initiative by ministry of jal shakti next question is in which year government e marketplace portal was launched so this was launched in 2016 why it was in news recently because recently the public procurement of goods and services through this portal or through this platform has crossed 1 lakh crore and that is why it was in news so what is this government e marketplace see different government departments and ministries purchase different items for example there is a department of science and technology so suppose they need to purchase 100 computers so this gem is just like any online shopping platform for example amazon so through this portal government agencies procure different items the objective of this platform is to ensure transparency in public procurement that means transparency in procurement by different government agencies and departments so that is why in 2016 this was launched and with the help of this platform goods and services are procured by the government ministries and departments recently it was in news because it has crossed the milestone of rupee 1 lakh crore next question is earth hour day is annually observed on the last saturday of which month so it is observed annually on the last saturday of march month this year it was observed on 27th of march so this earth hour is an initiative by wwf what is wwf it is world wildlife fund so this initiative encourages the global community to switch off the electric light that means to turn off your electric lights for 1 hour from 8:30 in night that is from 2030 to 2130 why so the idea is to spread awareness about our commitment to the earth so that people can understand the significance of nature and they can take different initiatives to protect our precious natural resources so that is why this earth hour day is celebrated so this time it was on 27th of march now on 27th of march world theater day is also celebrated on 1st of april recently utkal divas or odisha divas was celebrated on 2nd of april international children's book day was celebrated and 2nd of april was also celebrated as world autism awareness day you might have seen pa movie that was related to this concept of autism now recently odisha was also in news because of mahindra giri today the pan is not working properly so that's why i am not able to change the color but after this lecture i will check what is the issue so odisha was also in news because of mahindra giri what is mahindra giri so odisha government has proposed that mahindra giri can be the second biosphere reserve in odisha so what is the name of what is the name of first biosphere reserve in odisha it is simli pal odisha government has now proposed that mahindra giri that mahindra giri can be the second biosphere reserve in odisha odisha was also in news because first of april was celebrated as utkal divas or odisha day it was also in news because india's first fire park is going to be in odisha next question is mitali express a passenger train which was inaugurated recently connects dhaka with which indian city so dhaka is the capital of bangladesh recently this mitali express was in news because it was inaugurated by the prime minister of india and the prime minister of bangladesh it is a passenger train between india and bangladesh and it connect and it connects dhaka kent to the new jalpaiguri and it is in west bengal so this is the third passenger train between india and bangladesh other two are maitri express which connect dhaka to the kolkata and second is bandhan express which connect khulna to kolkata now please note that this year is being celebrated as 50 years of diplomatic ties between india and bangladesh apart from that bangladesh is also celebrating the 100th birth anniversary of banga bandhu sheikh mujibur rahman sheikh mujibur rahman is the founding father of bangladesh now please note that bangladesh became a separate nation after india's victory over pakistan in 1971 war so this time that means 2021 is also special because we are celebrating 50 years of our victory in that war apart from that on the occasion of birth anniversary of banga bandhu that is the founding father of bangladesh bangladesh is organizing a multinational military exercise and the name of this exercise is shantir agroshena so this is the name of exercise it is being organized by bangladesh and from indian side 
our army is going to participate in it. It means front runner of the peace. Actually, this will be organized to commemorate the 50 years of 1971 war. Next question is, which state has the largest number of old vehicles in India as per the recent data by road transport ministry? So as per the data, Karnataka has the highest number of vehicles which are older than 15 years. All over India, the number is 4 crore vehicles. That means 4 crore vehicles are older than 15 years and they are still being used by the public. Out of this 4 crore, approximately 70 lakhs are in Karnataka and Karnataka is on top position in this matter. Now please note that recently this road transport ministry released a vehicle scrappage policy. Now answer in comment box, what is the time limit as per this new policy for the private vehicles? Recently, this road transport ministry was also in news as it announced that in national register for DL, that is driving licenses, is being considered. So with this, the database of all the driving licenses will be unified. Please note that driving licenses are issued as per the provisions of Motor Vehicle Act of 1988. Now, in the context of transport, recently two other significant events were in news. First is decision taken by the Punjab government. So now women passengers can travel for free in all government run buses in Punjab. So this is a new initiative announced by the Punjab government. As for that, women passengers will not be charged any fare in government run buses. Second initiative related to transport is related to railways. So recently railway announced that no charging of electronic devices will be allowed between 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Next question is, as per the annual report of CIC, that is Central Information Commission, which union ministry made the highest rejections of request? So, so this has been done by MHJ, that is Ministry of Home Affairs. It had the highest rate of rejections of RTI applications. What does that mean? Suppose you file any RTI. Now, it is the responsibility of ministry to provide you the answer for that specific application. But on certain grounds, these applications can be rejected. One such ground is national security or nation's sovereignty. So MHA had the highest rate of rejection of such applications. RTI or the CIC is constituted or set up as per the provisions of Right to Information Act of 2005. So it is a statutory body. Recently MHA was also in news because Home Minister launched Ayushman CAPF scheme. CAPF stands for Central Armed Police Force. CAPF are under Ministry of Home Affairs. For Ayushman CAPF, MHA, that is Ministry of Home Affairs, collaborated with NHA, that is National Health Authority. Recently, NHA was in news because Mr. Ram Shevak Sarma has been appointed as new CEO of National Health Authority. PK Mishra, Anil Ghanwat, and Ashok Gulati are the members of Supreme Court appointed committee to study which issue. So the correct answer is to study the agricultural laws. So it is a Supreme Court appointed four member committee. Now please note that recently this panel was in news because it has submitted the report to the Supreme Court. The fourth member is Bupinder Singh Man. Now this fourth member decided to quit this committee. Apart from this, recently few other committees were in news. So recently ACC that is appointment committee of cabinet approved the appointment of Malika Srinivasan as the chairperson of PESB. What is PESB? It is Public Enterprises Selection Board. Public Enterprises Selection Board. So recently Malika Srinivasan has been appointed as the chairperson of this PESB. Now please note that C is the CMD of TAFE. T -A -F -E. And C is the first person who is from private sector and has been appointed as the chairperson of PESB. In addition to this committee, few more committees were in news. Recently, Labor Ministry decided to constitute three committees to oversee the OSH and WC. Now, this is important for EPFO examination. So, please read about it. What is this OSH? It is Occupational Safety, Health and Working Conditions Code Bill. So, it is regarding Occupational Safety. Recently, Labor Ministry constituted three committees. One committee will be headed by D.K. Shami. And this committee is going to oversee the fire safety. Second committee is going to be headed by PLN Murthy. And this committee is going to oversee the building and construction workers. 
third committee is dr r k elangwan committee so this committee is for factories and for dock workers all these committees are under the administrative domain of ministry of labor and employment next question is what is the new inflation target band fixed for the next 5 years that is from 2021 to 2026 so from 1st of april we have new fiscal year and from 1st of april 2021 to 31st of march 2026 the inflation target is fixed that means rbi need to make sure that the inflation rate remains within this specified range and this has been done under rbi act of 1934 so what is this inflation range it is between 4 plus minus 2 percentages that means at lowest it can be 2 percentages and maximum it can be 6 percentages so it is going to be between this range before 1st of april that means till 31st of march 2021 rbi already had the inflation target and it was same that is 4 plus minus 2 percentages now please note that an expert committee headed by dr urjit patel had recommended this inflation targeting this committee recommended that this inflation should be the nominal anchor for monetary policy framework and it should be within the range of 4 plus minus 2 recently dr patel was also in news as he has been appointed as the additional director of britannia dr patel is the former governor of reserve bank of india now for monetary policy framework we have mpc that is monetary policy committee now monetary policy committee is a six member committee out of which three are appointed by the government of india and three are from reserve bank of india and this committee is headed by rbi governor present rbi governor is dr shaktikant das next question is what is the amount raised by the government from disinvestment of cpsc in 2020-21 cpsc stands for central public sector enterprises so the amount was 32835 crore rupees so this is from the disinvestment of cpsc through the share sale and through buyback please note that for this year the disinvestment target is 1.75 lakh crore rupees now there is a term buyback what does this mean so buyback is a corporate action as per that a company try to buy its shares from the existing shareholders now suppose you are a company a b c your shares are in market say you have your 40% shares and rest 60% shares are in market and these shares are purchased by different shareholders again it is over simplification just to make you understand so in buyback what you try you try to buy your shares back from the market so suppose you can make it like 45 percentages and 55 percentages so you try to reduce the numbers of shares in market and you try to purchase them so this increase the proportion of your shares in the company this is buyback next question is which institution in its reports south asia vaccinates estimates india gdp growth in the range of 7.5 percentages to 12.5 percentages now in this question this range is not that much important but this report is important so the name of report is south asia vaccinates and it is a report by world bank targeted growth ranges from 7.5 percentages to 12.5 percentages apart from that recently one more report was in news and it is world in 2030 it is a public survey report so this is a report by unesco and as per this report the four biggest challenge in front of the societies of 2030 are going to be climate change violence and conflict loss of biodiversity discrimination and inequality and last one is water housing and food so this is a report by unesco in exam they may directly ask you that world in 2030 is a public survey report by which international organization next question is aim prime program launched by the niti aayog is associated with which objective so this aim AIM stands for Atal Innovation Mission. It is an initiative of Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog is national institution for transforming India. It is an executive body. So the objective of this AIM Prime is to promote science-based startups. What is the full form of AIM Prime? That is program for researchers on innovations, market readiness, and entrepreneurship. Now, in simplest term, objective is to promote science-based startups. and for this purpose atal innovation mission has collaborated with bill and melinda gates foundation prime minister is the ex officio chairperson of niti aayog niti aayog is a successor of planning commission now 
Please answer in comment box in the context of planning commission what is Gadgil plan. One more thing, on regular basis I see comments that Sir why don't you highlight the answer itself. See, when you are going to revise your current affairs, the goal is before I answer, your brain should select the correct answer. Now if I am going to highlight it, at that point of time, it will create a problem for your revision. So for your own convenience during revision, I try to avoid direct highlighting of answers. You will understand it when you are going to revise this information. Next question is Lakhta Center that was recently awarded with Amporis Skyscraper Award 2019 is located in which country? So this is in St. Petersburg of Russia and this award is given to the high rise architecture. Please note that this is the first time Russia has backed this award since its inception. That means since the beginning of this award for the first time Russia has got this award. The height of this building is 462 meters. It is in St. Petersburg in Russia. Now in the context of architecture, there is one more famous prize and it is Pritzker prize. It is the highest international honor given in the field of architecture. Answer in comment box for 2021, who are the winners of this Pritzker prize? Next question is what is the name of web portal launched by Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank for NCET web portal? So it is my NEP 2020. What is NCTE? It is National Council for Teachers Education. It has been recently inaugurated by Education Minister. So the idea is to get suggestions from different stakeholders so that a draft for the National Professional Standards for Teachers and a draft for the mentoring program can be framed. So this is an initiative related to standards of teaching and the quality of teachers. Next question is which international organization released Global Gender Gap Report? So this has been released by WEF that is World Economic Forum. As per this India is on 140th position. Last year India was on 112nd position. So you can see that there is a big drop in India's ranking. So this World Economic Forum released this Global Gender Gap Report. The first such report was released in 2006 and it is released on the basis of four dimensions. What are these four dimensions? First is economic participation, then educational attainment, then health and survival, and last one is political empowerment. So India's overall ranking is 148th and now India is one of the worst performers in South Asia. The top country is Iceland and Finland is on second position. Norway is on third position. Next question is the Comprehensive Economic Cooperation and Partnership Agreement that is CECPA between India and which country has came in force from 1st of April 2021. So this country is Mauritius. Now why it is so significant? Because it is the first time India has signed up such agreement with any African country. So first please see the geographical location of Mauritius. So this is the geographical location of Mauritius. This is our country. This is Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean and this is Atlantic Ocean. So Mauritius is the first such African country with which India has signed such a trade agreement. Apart from that, since 2011, it is the first time India has signed a free trade agreement with any country. The capital of Mauritius is Port Louis. Now recently, its neighbor Madagascar was also in news. Why? Because India has donated an advanced digital cobalt therapy machine and this machine has been developed by BARC that is Bhabha Atomic Research Center and the name of this machine is Bhabatron Second. So recently this machine was inaugurated in Anantarivo. Anantarivo is the capital of Madagascar. Which organization released Forest Governance by Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Report? So this has been released by FAO. FAO is Food and Agriculture Organization. So it is Organization of United Nations. Recently it completed 75 years and on that occasion India released a commemorative coin. The headquarters of FAO is in Rome. Rome is in Italy. So it has released forest governance by indigenous and tribal people report. As per this report, deforestation rates in Latin America and Caribbean are significantly lower in indigenous and in tribal territories. Now, for the welfare of tribal community in our country, we have MOTA, that is Ministry of Tribal Affairs. And we have TRIFAD. This TRIFAD is under the administrative control of MOTA. 
Now, what is TriFed? It is Tribal Cooperative Marketing Development Federation. So, recently this TriFed was in news because of its two initiatives. One is be the brand ambassador of Tribes India and second competition that it launched was be a friend of Tribes India. So, these two initiatives are launched in association with MyGOV.in. It has been launched by TriFed. TriFed is under the administrative control of Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Next question is Cactus and Cisco are the software launched by DST, that is Department of Science and Technology. The question is, these are associated with which field? So these are associated with solar mission. DST announced that scientists have developed a new technique to track the huge bubbles of gas which are ejected from the sun. And this new technique will be used in India's first solar mission. What is the name of India's first solar mission? It is Aditya L1. And for that purpose, these two softwares will be used. One is Cactus and second is Cisco. So what is Cactus? It is computer-aided CME tracking software. And what is Cisco? It is CME's identification in inner solar corona. So the name of our solar mission is Aditya L1. And it will be the first solar mission. Solar means to study the sun. So it will be our first solar mission. And as a part of this mission, we are going to observe the lower region of solar corona. Now recently DST that is Department of Science and Technology was also in news as it announced Swan Jayanti scholarship. So these scholarship will be provided by Department of Science and Technology and this is for the youth of Bangladesh. Why so? Because this year that means 2021 is being celebrated as 50 years of India-Bangladesh diplomatic ties. Apart from that recently Government of India announced scholarship to the descendants of Liberation War fighter of Bangladesh. What does that mean? See, those who participated in the Liberation War of Bangladesh, so the descendants of such people will be provided scholarship by the Government of India. Please note that DST is under Ministry of Science and Technology and present Science and Technology Minister is Dr. Harshwadhan. Dr. Harshwadhan is present Science and Technology Minister he also holds the portfolio of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Recently, he launched Integrated Health Information Platform. So, as the name suggests, it is going to be our disease surveillance program. And India is the first country in the world to have such an advanced disease surveillance program. Now, in the context of health, recently, National Digital Health Mission was also in news. Ayushman CAPF was also in news. Ayushman Sehat was also in news. Apart from that, recently, Rajasthan became the first state in our country to provide free health insurance to all. In addition to that, recently, Rajasthan was also in news because it became the first state to commission farm-based solar power project under PM Kusum scheme. What is PM Kusum? It is Pradhan Mantri Kisan Urja Suraksha Evam Uthan Maha Abhiyan. So the first such project has been carried out by Rajasthan Renewable Energy Corporation and this has been done at Bhaloji village in Kotputli and this is in Jaipur region of Rajasthan. Now in the context of health one more event was in news as recently Ministry of Health and Family Welfare launched national policy for rare disease. So in just one question we have covered at least 10 important news events. One more thing every year on 28th of February this rare disease day is observed. Next question is, which country has released the world's first annual vaccine against novel coronavirus? So Russia is this country and it has released or it has launched world's first animal vaccine against coronavirus. Name is Carnivac Cove. So the vaccine claims that use of this vaccine will prevent the development of mutation of virus. Mutation means change. So the virus keep on changing keep on mutating and that is why it is very very difficult to prevent it. So now Russia claims that it has developed world's first COVID-19 vaccine for animals and name of this vaccine is Carnivac Cov. Recently Russia was also in news because of a new law and this new law will allow Russian President Putin to stay in power till 2036. Before this there was a limit on presidential terms that means President can continue for two consecutive terms. But now, this new law will set aside that limit. Next question is, Finance Ministry has announced rules to scrap which four-decade 
body formed under income tax or wealth tax acts so the name of this body is settlement commission recently finance ministry has announced rules for winding up of settlement commission so the settlement commission used to resolve the disputes related to income tax and wealth tax and it was constituted in 1976 under income tax act of 1961 and wealth tax act now instead of this commission a new dispute resolution system will be provided and this new dispute resolution system will be available to the assessees with a taxable income up to 50 lakh and where the dispute income is up to 10 lakh rupees so what is this entire issue see suppose you are a taxpayer t1 you paid the tax money now there is a dispute dispute in the sense that government says you paid less tax on the other hand you are saying no you paid right amount of tax so this is a dispute so for the resolution of such disputes we had settlements commission now government has notified the rules to scrap this settlement commission instead of this commission there will be a new different system for the resolution of such disputes now for reducing tax disputes there was one more scheme and it was vivad se vishwas so answer in comment box whether this scheme vivad se vishwas scheme was for direct tax or it was for indirect tax next question is which country has created a world record for the fastest road construction so this is our country and india has entered a guinness world record by building a 2.5 km four lane concrete road within 24 hours apart from that it also built 25 km bitumen road between solapur to bijapur in addition to that a record construction of 37 km per day was achieved during the last financial year present road transport minister is mr nitin gadkari recently this road transport ministry was also in news as it introduced national register for driving licenses that is dl so the idea is to make a common database for the old driving licenses so that we can prevent the duplication or misuse of driving license a similar project is being done for the property plots and the name of this initiative is ulpin like we have aadhar card so aadhar card is unique for each individual similarly for each plot there will be unique identification number so this ulpin stands for unique land parcel identification number so this is going to be a 14 digit number and this will be provided to the every plot of land in our country now answer in comment box aadhar is how many digit number aadhar is issued by uidai that is unique identification authority of india it is under ministry of electronics and information technology that is miti next question is which bank has partnered with jbic of japan to extend loans to the japanese automobile manufacturers in india so this has been done by sbi that is state bank of india it has signed agreement with jbic that is japan bank for international cooperation for loan agreement up to 1 billion dollars jbic is completely owned by the government of japan so the idea is to promote or to ease out the flow of funds for the business operations of japanese automobile manufacturers in our country now sbi is dsiv that is domestic systemically important bank three banks are given the status of dsiv these are hdfc icici and sbi and this status is given by RBI that is Reserve Bank of India recently RBI was in news as RBI deputy governor BP Kanungo retired now in the context of finance sector few other events were in news first is phone pay so recently phone pay became the first player in the industry to cross billion transaction mark on UPI what is UPI it is unified payment interface second is related to NPCI that is National Payment Corporation of India So it has transferred its Bharat Bill payment business to its new subsidiary NBBL. Third is related to UNI Carbon Card. So what is this UNI Carbon Card? U- Union Bank of India has launched a co-branded credit card, and the title is UNI Carbon Card. This has been launched as HPCL co-branded carbon card. Now coming back to Japan. So recently Japan was also in news because Japanese physicist. Isamu Akashaki passed away and he won the Nobel prize in 2014 and he won the Nobel prize in physics so they won the Nobel prize in physics for revolutionary led lamps 
Now recently Japan was also in news as it recorded its earliest cherry blossom bloom in 1200 years. So as per the climate experts this is a sign of climate change. Next question is which telescope captured the M87 black hole within its magnetic field? So this has been done by EHT. What is EHT? It is Event Horizon Telescope. So for the first time the scientists who were working on Event Horizon Telescope have created an image showing the magnetic field around a black hole and this black hole is located in M87 galaxy. So what has been done? Few important terms. First is M87. So it is the name of galaxy. Second is black hole. This black hole is in this M87 galaxy and around this black hole a magnetic field is there. So the scientist have created an image showing this magnetic field around this black hole and this has been done with the help of event horizon telescope. Now what is black hole? So black hole is a region of space time. In simplest term this is a area where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape. So no light can escape from it and that is why it is black. Next question is which ministry has amended the rules pertaining to location of thermal power plants near cities and national capital region. So this has been done by MOEFCC that is Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Recently it has amended the rules related to the location of thermal power plants within the 10 km of major cities with more than 10 lakh population and in the NCR that is national capital region. Apart from that as per the amended rules certain emission norms have been specified and these norms are to be followed by thermal power plants latest by the end of 2022 that means emission limits are specified and these limits are to be followed by these thermal power plants. Now in this context a task force will be constituted by CPCB. What is CPCB? It is Central Pollution Control Board. So this task force will categorize the thermal power plants based on their location. CPCB is a statutory body under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now in the context of power plants, recently India's largest floating solar power plant was in use and this is going to be in Ramagundam and Ramagundam is in Telangana and this will be commissioned by NTPC that is National Thermal Power Corporation and it will have the capacity of 100 megawatt and for your factual knowledge it will have 4.5 lakhs PV panels that is photovoltaic panels. Recently CPCB was also in news as it collaborated with BMC that is Bhopal Municipal Corporation to set up India's first e-waste clinic in Bhopal. Bhopal is in Madhya Pradesh. Next question is what is the full form of HSN? HSN stands for Harmonized System of Nomenclature. Why it was in news because recently Finance Ministry has notified that the business entities with a turnover of more than 5 crore need to have this 6 digit HSN code. So turnover limit is 5 crore. This HSN is a 6 digit code. So this is international system of names and numbers to classify the traded products and it came in effect in 1988. So what is this HSN? See when you are transporting goods from one place to another place say from A to B these codes will be used and with the help of these codes it can be identified that from where this transportation was started what is the product inside it so it will speed up the checking process. This system is used all over the world. Now recently finance ministry has announced that business with annual turnover of more than 5 crore will have to use the 6 digit HSN code on their tax invoice with less than 5 crore will have to furnish 4 digit HSN code. Previously the requirement for both was 4 digit HSN code and 2 digit HSN code. Now as per the new rules for more than 5 crore turnover 6 digit code is mandatory and for lowers and for lesser than that 4 digit code is mandatory. So HSN stands for harmonized system of nomenclature. It was adopted by WCO that is World Customs Organization and it was adopted by WCO in 1988. We, we in the sense that India adopted it in 1986. Yes, even before WCO. So it applied to both GST and to the customs. So now this HSN code make the process of filing GST easy. Why so? Because 
If you use adjacent code, then you need not to upload the details about the goods that you are transporting. So this will speed up the trade all over the world because it will speed up the clearance process. Now in the context of trade, recently one more event was in news. Recently India proposed that it is going to allow trade of sugar and cotton with Pakistan. However, Pakistan rejected this offer. Please note that Pakistan is now suffering a shortage of these products and that is why India offered the trade of these products. However, Pakistan now denied and it had said that no bilateral trade would be encouraged with India until Article 370 is restored in Jammu and Kashmir. Which state has amended its provisions in Legislative Assembly to maintain the decorum of house? So this state is Haryana. Recently, Haryana has amended several provisions related to conduct of business in the Legislative Assembly of state. One such provision is that it is mandatory to have the presence of at least two ministers in the house plus as per the new provisions, it prevented the members from tearing of the documents in the house in protest. So the objective is to maintain the decorum of house. Haryana was also in use as recently Haryana Legislative Assembly passed a bill to recover damages from the protesters in case if they damage public property. So during riots or during any protest, if protesters damage public property, as per this new bill, such damage will be recovered from these protesters. Apart from that, Haryana was also in news as recently it approved a bill to reserve 75% of the jobs in private sector for the local people, that means for the people of Haryana. This is for private sector and reservation is 75%. The Chief Minister of Haryana is Manohar Lal Khattar and Governor is Satyadev Narayan Arya. Next question is which ministry has released the report Women and Men in India 2020. So this is a report by MOSPI, that is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. The title of report is Women and Men in India 2020. And this is the 20th report in the series. The first such report was published in 1995. So this report provides the data related to gender. Now recently, one more report was in use and it is Gender Gap Report. This is a report released by World Economic Forum. As per this report, India is on 140th position. Last year, India was on 112nd position. Next question is, as per the data by National Saving Institute, which state has made the highest contribution to the government's small savings schemes? So this is the state of West Bengal. As per this recent data released by National Saving Institute, West Bengal has made the highest contribution to the government's small savings scheme and it has contributed for more than 15% in the deposit at post office and in the banks. So West Bengal is on first position in this context and it is followed by Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Gujarat and then Tamil Nadu. Next question is which university has secured the first place among Indian universities in academic ranking of world universities? Now first thing first, this academic ranking of world universities that is ARWU is also known as Shanghai ranking. Shanghai is in China. So this ranking was released recently. As per this ranking, Calcutta University is the first among the Indian universities. Please note that this is about universities. If we talk about higher educational institutions, then it is on third position in our country. IISC Bengaluru is on top position among the higher education institutions. So as per this ARWU, Harvard University is on top position globally. Stanford is on second position in India and Calcutta University is on third position among higher educational institutions. In our country, IISC Bangalore is on top position in terms of higher educational institutions. Now recently, one more institution was in news and it is IIT Kanpur. So why it was in news? It was in news because IIT Kanpur developed a touch sensitive watch for visually impaired people. So that is why this IIT Kanpur was in news. Now coming back to Shanghai. So there is an institution named after Shanghai. It is Shanghai Cooperation Organization that is SCO. So SCO is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Total eight countries are the members of SCO out of which Russia, China, India and Pakistan are member and four Central Asian countries are the members of SCO. 
except Turkmenistan. So out of total five Central Asian countries, Turkmenistan is not member of SCO. The headquarters of SCO is in Beijing. Please note that even though the name is Shanghai Cooperation Organization, headquarter is in Beijing. Beijing is in China. SEO was also in news because of rats. Answer in comment box, what is rats in the context of SEO? Now recently China was also in news because of Longi Green. So what is this Longi Green? It is world's largest solar company and it is a Chinese company. So why it was in news recently? It was in news because now it has decided to enter into the hydrogen market. Apart from that, China was also in news as recently plant insect gene transfer was reported for first time and this has been done by the scientists of China. That means the transfer of gene between the plant and insect. Usually the transfer of gene happen among the same family that means from plant to plant or from insect to insect but this is first time that a gene has been transferred from the plant to insect. So that is why it is significant. Next question is which organization has launched the Sankalp Se Siddhi village and digital connect drive. So this has been done by TriFed. What is TriFed? It is Tribal Cooperative Marketing Federation of India. TriFed is under MOTA. What is MOTA? It is Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Recently TriFed launched the Sankalp Se Siddhi Village and Digital Connect Drive. So the drive commenced on 1st of April. The main intention of this initiative is to activate the One Dhan Kendra of Villages. Now what is this One Dhan Kendra? So there is a scheme by government of India, One Dhan Scheme and the scheme was launched in 2018 and it is a scheme by MOTA in association with TriFed. So it aims to improve the income of tribals through value addition of tribal products. So the objective is to increase the living standard of tribals. How that will be done by increasing their income. How income will increase by the value addition of tribal products. So as a part of this scheme, one dhan kendras are set up. These are set up for skill upgradation and for the capacity building. Next question is which organization has developed an advanced shaft to safeguard naval ship against missile attack. So this has been done by DRDO. What is DRDO? It is Defense Research and Development Organization. So recently it has developed an advanced shaft technology. So this term can be asked directly that advanced shaft technology was in use. It is related to. So this technology is used in the naval ships. So why it is used? It is used to self defend against enemy radar and radio frequency missile seeker. In simplest term, this advanced shaft technology is used in the naval ships for their own protection or for their self defense. Recently, DRDO has developed an advanced shaft technology. So this will help us to protect our naval ship against any missile attack. Now recently one more technology was in use and it is air independent propulsion. Answer in comment box. What is the objective of air independent propulsion system? Okay, DRDO is Defense Research and Development Organization. It is under MOD that is Ministry of Defense. Next question is. What is India's target for ethanol blending in petrol for 2022? So the target for ethanol blending in petrol is 10% by 2022. So why this issue was in news recently? Because India has achieved more than 7.2% of ethanol blending in the fuel for the first four months of ethanol supply. And this is the highest ever we have achieved so far. So that is why this was in news. Target is to reach 10% of ethanol blending in petrol by 2022. Some states like Goa, Karnataka and Maharashtra have achieved up to 9 to 9.5% of ethanol blending. Now recently Bihar was in news as it approved ethanol production promotion policy and therefore it became the first state in our country to have an ethanol promotion policy. Recently Bihar was also in news because of one controversial law and it is Bihar Special Armed Police Bill. So this bill allow the special armed police officers to carry out the search and to arrest without warrant. So that is why there was a lot of controversy about it. It provides the power to the special armed police force to carry out search and arrest without warrant. Now recently one more police bill was in use and it is Police Crime 
sentencing and courts bill so this bill was in use because of uk parliament and people are protesting against it so the protest against this bill has been named as kill the bill protest so in exam they may ask you that recently which country was in use for kill the bill protest so people of uk are protesting against this police crime sentencing courts bill so as per the protesters this new bill will provide more brutal powers to the police next question is on which day the national maritime day is celebrated so it is celebrated on 5th of april this time we celebrated 58th edition of this national maritime day the first such event was celebrated in 1964 so why 5th of april is so significant because it was on 5th of april in 1919 indian shipping first started with the with the ship ss loyalty and the ship sailed from mumbai to uk now 5th of april is national maritime day now 5th of april is national maritime day on the other hand 6th of april is international day of sport for development and peace 5th of april is also celebrated as international day of conscience apart from that recently one more day was in use as recently government announced that 14th of april will be a public holiday from now onwards why so because it is the birth anniversary of dr bhimrao ambedkar dr ambedkar was the first law minister of independent india so now government has announced that 14th of april which is the birth anniversary of dr ambedkar will be observed as a public holiday on the other hand 4th of april is observed as mine awareness day that is international mine awareness day and the theme of this year was perseverance partnership and progress apart from that 1st of april was celebrated as utkal divas or odisha divas now recently odisha was also in news because of adi kavi sarla das so recently vice president m venkaiah naidu addressed an event and this was event to celebrate the 600th birth anniversary of adi kavi sarla das sarla das was one of the greatest scholar of odia literature odia is the official language of odisha and during this event the vice president gave kaling ratna award to biswa bhushan hari chandan mr hari chandan is the governor of andhra pradesh the award was given by the vice president and this award is conferred by sarla sahitya sansad and this is in the memory of adi kavi sarla das next question is which cryptocurrency exchange has launched nft that is non fungible tokens marketplace for indian artists and creators so this has been done by wazirx it is a indian cryptocurrency exchange recently it has launched nft that is non fungible token marketplace for the indian artists and creators so as a part of this mechanism indian artists can now place their digital assets like audio video or any other art piece for auction over blockchain based this nft marketplace and they can earn royalty so this is india's first such nft marketplace and that is why it is very significant what is nft it is non fungible token fungible means all the currency units are same like one can be replaced for other non fungible token means every unit is specific and it is unique and therefore it cannot be replicated or it cannot be replaced by some other unit next question is who has been appointed as the head of bcci's anti corruption unit so mr shabbir hussain has been appointed as the head of bcci's anti corruption unit what is bcci it is board of control for cricket in india so it is the governing body for cricket in our country recently it was in news because of ipl ipl is indian premier league presently the captain of indian male cricket team is virat kohli answer in comment box who is the captain of india's female cricket team recently virat kohli was also in news as he has been appointed as the brand ambassador of digit insurance now in addition to this recently few other sports events were in news first is men's boxing world championship so this is going to be organized in 2023 and this will be organized in tashkent tashkent is in uzbekistan second is miami open so this is a tennis tournament and recently hubert hokaj won it receivables exchange of india that is rxil which was in news recently is associated with which sector so it is associated with msme it is a 
TREDS platform. What is TREDS? It is Trade Receivables Discounting System and it is accredited by RBI. Recently, RXIL was in news because it announced that it has discounted receivables of Rs. 1000 crores in a month. So first thing first, this platform is for MSME. Second thing is, what is this trade receivables? So suppose you are a company, you have provided goods or services to some customer, but you have not received the payment so far. So that is a trade receivable. It is the total amount that a company has billed to the customer for the goods and services they have delivered but haven't received the payment so far. This is trade receivable. So this RXIL was set up in 2016 and it is a joint venture of SIDB and NSE. What is SIDB? It is Small Industries Development Bank of India. What is NSE? It is National Stock Exchange. So the objective of RXIL is to provide a platform to MSME that is micro, small and medium enterprises so that they can auction their trade receivables. So this has addressed or this has helped to address the issue of delayed payments for MSME. Present MSME ministries Nitin Gadkari. Now recently RBI was also in news because of few news events. First RBI was in news as it announced that it is going to release financial inclusion index and this will be released annually and this will be released in July. RBI was also in news as recently it increased WMA that is ways and means advance limit for the states and for UTs that is union territories. What is WMA? It is ways and means advances and this has been done that means this limit has been increased or enhanced on the recommendations of a committee and that committee was headed by Sudhir Srivastava. So, this WMA are the temporary advance given by RBI to the states for any mismatch in the payments and receipts. So this is a temporary arrangement. If there is a mismatch in the payment, so RBI will provide this much money. So previous limit was 32,225 crores. Now it has been increased to 47,010 crores. So this is approximately an increment of 46 percentage. Please note that for the temporary time period, RBI has increased this limit. Apart from that, RBI was also in news because it increased the maximum balance limit for payment banks. Previously, the maximum balance limit in payment bank was 1 lakh rupees. Now, it, it has been increased to 2 lakhs. Now, please answer in comment box which committee recommended payment banks and small finance banks and which was the first payment bank in our country. Apart from that, RBI was also in news because of its latest monetary policy committee report. So the latest rates are repo rate is 4 percentage, reverse repo is 3.35 percentage, MSF that is marginal standing facility is at 4.25 percentage, bank rate is 4.25 percentage, CRR is 3.50 percentage, CRR is cash to reserve ratio. RBI was also in news because recently former deputy governor of RBI BP RBI was also in news as recently deputy governor of RBI BP Kanun Go retired. One more thing this MPC that is monetary policy committee is a six member committee. Right now the monetary policy department is headed by Dr. MD Patra. Next question is who has been appointed as a new department of economic affairs secretary succeeding Tarun Bajaj. So Ajay Singh has been appointed as a new secretary of department of economic affairs. Tarun Bajaj who was the present DEA secretary has now been appointed as the revenue secretary. In addition to that few other personalities were in news recently Virat Kohli was appointed as the brand ambassador of Vivo smartphone. Apart from him recently Justice N. V. Ramanna was appointed as the 48th CJI that is Chief Justice of India. In addition to him recently Carl Bildt was appointed as the WHO that is World Health Organization Special Envoy for ACT Accelerator. What is ACT? ACT is access to COVID-19 tools. In addition to him, recently Chintan Vaishnav has been appointed as the MD of Atal Innovation Mission. Atal Innovation Mission is part of Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog is an executive body. It is successor of Planning Commission. 
Prime Minister is the ex officio chairperson of Niti Aayog. In addition to him, recently S Raman has been appointed as the new CMD of Sidbi. What is Sidbi? It is Small Industries Development Bank of India. The headquarters of Sidbi is in Lucknow and it is in Uttar Pradesh. Next question is Benjamin Netanyahu is set to form a new government in which country? So this country is Israel. Recently elections held in Israel and now Israeli president has invited Benjamin Netanyahu to form the new government. Please note that he is the longest serving leader of Israel. Next question is Xenobots which were seen in news recently are robots developed from the stem cell of which organism? So recently researchers at Tuftas University have developed robots named Xenobots and these are developed from the stem cells of frogs. So what is so special about these robots? Actually these are able to self heal after damage. That means they will be able to recover automatically after damage. So this is tremendous development and that is why it is significant. So these robots can work in teams and they can record information about their surrounding and they have the capability to self heal. So obviously they have the utility in biomedical sector and in environmental studies. Name is Genobots and these are developed from the stem cell of frogs. Next question is which country has approved Calberry? The first new drug for children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So recently FDA that is Food and Drug Administration of USA have approved this first new drug for the kids with ADHD that is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So this disease is said to be the reason behind inattention hyperactivity and impulsivity. Recently USA or to be specific FDA of USA approved this first new drug. Next question is which regulator has asked Indian companies to separate the roles of chairperson and managing director. So this has been done by market regulator SEBI. What is SEBI? It is Securities and Exchange Board of India. So recently it was in news. Actually the previous deadline for this separation was 1st of April 2020 and based on the representation from different stakeholders SEBI revised this deadline. Now it is 1st of April 2022. That means by that time the top 500 listed companies should have separate J person and MD. Why this is being done? See, if the company will have J person come MD, that means same person will be J person and MD, then it is concentration of power. So, to improve corporate governance, SEBI mandated this. Now, please note that this is a recommendation suggested by Kotec Committee on Corporate Governance. So, the first Kotec Committee on corporate governance. So now the new deadline is 1st of April 2022. Top 500 listed companies need to follow this. Next question is which group of companies has become third in India to cross 100 billion US dollars market capitalization. So this company is Adani Group. It is headed by Mr. Gautam Adani. It has become third in our country to cross the market capitalization of 100 crores which are first two entities one is Tata Group and another is Reliance Group. Now recently this Adani Group was also in news as APSEZ that is Adani Ports acquired remaining 25% stakes in Krishna Patnam Port. Now this Krishna Patnam Port is wholly owned subsidiary of Adani Ports because in October 2020 it had acquired 75% stakes. Now it acquired remaining 25% stakes. So this is a port on the eastern coast and it is in Andhra Pradesh. Now apart from this acquisition, one more acquisition was in news and recently Baiju acquired AESL that is Akas Educational Services Limited and it acquired AESL in 1 billion dollars. Next question is FPI that is Foreign Portfolio Investment Inflows of how much amount has been registered by India in last fiscal. So it is 2.74 lakh crore. So India has witnessed a strong FPI inflow even in the COVID situation that shows that still there is a confidence of investors in Indian market. FPI is foreign investment in the stocks, bonds. Now FDI is foreign direct investment. FPI is foreign investment in stocks market. Now in this context there is a committee Arvind Mayaram committee. Answer in comment box 
What is the limit? This committee suggested for the difference between FDI and FPI. Next question is who represented India in the consultation meeting of education ministers of E9 countries? So, Mr. Sanjay Dhutre, the Union Minister of State for Education, represented India in this meeting. Please note, I said Minister of State for Education. Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank is Education Minister and he is Minister of State. So, usually this Minister of State is headed by Cabinet Minister. However, in certain cases, MOS, that is Minister of State, is given independent charge as well. Anyway, so what is this E9 initiative? E9 is a forum of nine countries. Which are these nine countries? These are Bangladesh, Egypt, Mexico, Brazil, India, Nigeria, China, Indonesia, and Pakistan. So, it is an initiative related to education. And this initiative was launched in 1993. And it was started to achieve the goals of UNESCO's Education for All initiative. So, since E9 initiative is in news, examiner may ask you that this Education for All initiative is part of which international organization? So, the theme of this recent E9 initiative meeting was scaling up digital learning to accelerate progress towards SDG number 4, that is Sustainable Development Goal number 4. This E9 initiative was launched in 1993 as a part of this Education for All summit and this summit held in our country. To be specific, it held in New Delhi. Next question is, under the integrated health information platform launched by Health Ministry, how many diseases can be tracked? So previously, it was tracking 18 diseases. Now, it is capable of tracking 33 diseases. Present Health Ministry is Dr. Harshwadhan. Recently, he launched this integrated health information platform. So it is a disease surveillance platform and India is first country to have such advanced disease surveillance program. Now recently, Dr. Harshwadhan was also in news as Dr. Harshwadhan and Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda launched Tribal Health Collaborative Aname. So this will be supported by Piramal Foundation and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. What is the core objective of this initiative? Objective is Tribal Health. By converging different initiatives by the government agencies and organizations. As per the tribunal's reform ordinance promulgated recently, the powers of appellate authorities are vested with which body? So, first thing first, the centre promulgated tribunal reforms ordinance recently. So, as per the ordinance, the existing appellate authorities are replaced and their powers are vested in the high courts. Let me simplify it. See, tribunals are specialised courts. They're, that means they will hear only specific type of cases. On the other hand, Courts will hear all type of cases. Tribunals are quasi-judicial body. Quasi means partially. Now, in order to challenge the decision of a tribunal, there is a appellate authority. Now, as per this recent ordinance, the appellate authorities are vested in the high court. That means after the judgment of tribunal, you can challenge that judgment in the high court. If we talk about ordinance powers, Article 123 contains the ordinance powers of President and Article 213 contains the provisions for ordinance powers of governor. If we talk about tribunals, originally tribunals were not the part of constitution. It was incorporated in Indian constitution through 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act and it was in 1976. So now we have two important articles, 323A and 323B. This 323A is related to administrative tribunals. So you can keep it this way, A to A. So A stands for administrative tribunals and B stands for all other tribunals. That means tribunals related to other matters. Please note that tribunals under Article 323A can be established only by the parliament. On the other hand, tribunals under Article 323B can be established both by parliament as well as by the state government depending on their legislative competence and the legislative competence is specified in the 7th schedule. So in 7th schedule, there are three lists, union list, st state list and concurrent list. Next question is, Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers organized National Dialogue on Chemical Manufacturing along with which organization? So this organization is UNIDO. What is IDO? It is United Nations Industrial Development Organization. So as the name suggests, it promotes industrial development for the poverty eradication and for the environmental sustainability. Recently, UNIDO was in use as it organized 
this national dialogue on chemical manufacturing as well as a dialogue under clean manufacturing in India as a part of Swachh Udyog. Udyog stands for industry. So this UNIDO is United Nations Agency and the headquarters is in Vienna. Vienna is in Austria. In fact, Vienna is the headquarters of OPEC. What is OPEC? It is Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Usually a related term is also used and it is OPEC plus. So answer in comment box. What is the difference between OPEC and OPEC plus? Apart from that, the headquarters of IAEA, that is International Atomic Energy Agency, is also in Vienna in Austria. Please answer in comment box whether IAEA is an organization of United Nations or not. Next question is the Barak nuclear power plant, which was started recently, is situated in which country? So it is situated in the UAE, that is United Arab Emirates. Why it is so special? Because it is the first nuclear power station in Arab world and this is located in Abu Dhabi recently it was in use because it start it started its commercial operations so this power plant has been built with the help of South Korea so there are two Korea one is North Korea one is South Korea capital of North Korea is Pyongyang capital of South Korea is Seoul recently South Korea was also in use because of LG so LG is a company of South Korea and recently LG announced that it is going to quit smartphone business. Recently, North Korea was in use as it decided not to participate in Tokyo Olympics. Tokyo is in Japan and it is the host of this year's Olympic Games. Recently, Netra Kumanan was in use in the context of Olympics and she became the first Indian woman sailor to qualify for the Olympics. Apart from that, recently, Indian Army officer Lieutenant Colonel Bharat Pannu made Guinea's world record for fastest solo cycling. Now recently Indian Army was also in use because of military farms as Indian Army decided to close the military farms after 132 years of service. So the decision was taken on 31st of March. Now usually these military farms were set up with an objective to provide hygienic cow milk to the troops and these were set up during the Britishers time. So the first military farm was formed in 1889 at Allahabad and Allahabad is in Uttar Pradesh. Next question is which institution announced that it favored adoption of global minimum tax on corporate profits. So this was proposed by IMF that is International Monetary Fund. The chief economist of IMF is Geeta Gopinath recently she was in news because IMF has announced adoption of a global minimum tax on the corporate profits. See, because of the pandemic situation, everyone suffered. However, because of this pandemic, the rich become richer and the poor become poorer. So, IMF has proposed solidarity tax on pandemic winners. Who are pandemic winners? Those companies which prospered during the pandemic situation. So, IMF has proposed that a temporary solidarity tax should be imposed on such companies which earned more profit during the pandemic situation. Idea is to reduce social inequalities so this is going to be a temporary tax now this is on the lines of germany's solidarity tax actually a solidarity tax was imposed in germany after unification in 1991 so after the unification of east and western germany this tax was proposed recently imf was also in news as imf along with world bank launched climate change platform for poor countries IMF was also in news because of its recent report and it is World Economic Outlook. Please note that World Economic Prospectus is released by World Bank and World Economic Outlook is released by IMF. So recently this report was released and as per this report in fiscal year 2022, India's growth projection is going to be 12.5 percent and therefore India is going to be the country with highest growth including both emerging and advanced economies. Next question is, what is the theme of World Health Day 2021? So every year, World Health Day is celebrated on 7th of April. Actually, it is the anniversary of foundation of WHO in 1948. WHO is World Health Organization. So the theme for this year was building a fairer and healthier world. Apart from that, on 9th of April, CRPF Valor Day was celebrated. 
CRPF is Central Reserve Police Force. CRPF are under CAPF, that is Central Armed Police Force. That means CRPF are part of CAPF and CAPF are under the administrative control of MHJ, that is Ministry of Home Affairs. Recently, Home Affairs Minister Amit Shah launched Ayushman CAPF scheme. In addition to that, 7th of April was also observed as International Day of Reflection on Genocide in Rwanda. Next question is, which country has hosted the meeting of BRICS Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors 2021? So, India recently hosted the meeting of BRICS Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. So, it is a grouping of five countries and there is a bank by these countries. It is New Development Bank. It is also known as BRICS Bank. Recently, Marcus Trojo was appointed as the president of this new development bank. Marcus Trojo is from Brazil. So this meeting was co-chaired by Union Finance Minister Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman and RBI Governor Mr. Shaktikant Das. Now recently, RBI was also in news because of GSEC. GSEC stands for Government Securities Acquisition Program. So this is SAP 1.0. Actually, this is GSAP 1.0. That is Government Securities Acquisition Program 1.0. So as a part of this program, Central Bank, that is Reserve Bank of India, is going to purchase government bonds worth rupee 1 trillion. And the first purchase of rupee 25,000 crore is to be done on 15th of April 2021. RBI was also in use because of its amended or modified inflation forecast rate model. What is inflation? Inflation is price rise. So recently, RBI has revised its inflation forecast model. That means this model is used for the estimation of inflation in upcoming time period. So this model has been amended so that the monetary policy and fiscal policy work in coherence so that they can work in coordination with each other. Fiscal policy is policy by government and monetary policy is policy by Reserve Bank of India, that is Central Bank. So in this new or in this amended for inflation forecast model, there are three major blocks. One is fiscal block, second is fuel block and third is balance of payment block. Next question is, what was the target for number of houses in the first phase of Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen component? So the target was 1 crore houses. Recently, it was in use as under the scheme that is under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen component, 92% of the target has been completed. So the target of first phase was 1 crore and out of that 92% target is completed. Overall, the scheme aims to construct 2.95 crore houses by 2022. In 2022, India is going to complete 75 years of independence. So first thing first, this scheme was launched in 2016. To be specific, it was launched in April 2016. Objective is housing for all by 2022. So the minimum size of house under the scheme is 25 meters square. Previously, it was 20 meters square. Now the financial burden will be shared. So some component will be provided by central government. Some component will be provided by the state government. Now in case of plain areas, the distribution is 60-40. That is 60% will be provided by central government. Remaining 40% will be provided by the state government. In case of hilly areas, this is about plain areas, this is about hilly areas or northeast area. This contribution is 90-10, that is 90% will be provided by central government and remaining 10% will be provided by state government. And this scheme is under MORD. What is MORD? That is Ministry of Rural Development. Present MORD Minister is Narendra Singh Tomar. Recently, Mr. Tomar was in news as he launched Madhu Kranti portal. So Madhu is related to B. Kranti is revolution. Actually Madhu is I think honey. So it is an initiative of National B Board to enable traceability shows of honey and other beehive products. Now in the context of B, recently project rehab was in news. What is rehab? It stands for reducing elephant human attacks using bees. So as the name suggests, with the help of bees, the human animal conflict is reduced. So this is an initiative by KVIC. What is KVIC? It is Khadian Village Industries Commission. So it is under MS 
M.E. Nasri. So this project rehab was started in Nagarhole National Park of Karnataka. So how this entire thing works? See, this project used ghee boxes as a boundary or as a fence. So suppose this is the national park area and on the boundaries these B boxes are used. So like this these boxes are used. Now these B create a buzz. This buzz sound irritate elephants. So because of this irritation they won't come out of these areas and that is how this will reduce the human un the and that is how this will reduce the human animal conflict. These B boxes are distributed as a part of honey mission. And this honey mission is an initiative of KVIC, that is Khadi and Village Industries Commission. This is part of MSME Ministry. Present MSME Ministry is Nitin Gadkari. He also holds the portfolio of Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. The Snagarhol National Park, where this project was started, is also known as Rajiv Gandhi National Park. So why this project was in news recently? Now this project will be implemented in other states as well to reduce the human elephant conflict. Next question is what amount of refinance assistance will be provided by Re Reserve Bank of India to all India financial institutions. So this is 50,000 crore. It will be provided to the all India finance institutions such as NABARD, SIDB and NHB. As a part of this initiative NABARD is going to receive 25,000 crore, SIDB is going to receive 15,000 crore and NHB is going to receive 10,000 crore as refinance credit facility. Now recently RBI was also in news because of DSIB that is domestic systemically important banks. So three banks are given the status of DSIB these are State Bank of India, SDFC and ICICI. Next question is what is IH2A which was in news recently. So this IH2A stands for India H2 Alliance. So major players in the energy sector came together to form a new energy coalition. It is India H2 Alliance. Objective is to focus on the hydrogen technologies. That's why H2 so that we can make our country a net zero carbon emitter. So the objective of this alliance or this coalition and to focus on the hydrogen supply chain in our country. Next question is PLI that is production linked incentives scheme for white goods has been approved recently. What are the goods that are covered under this tag? So recently union cabinet headed by prime minister approved the PLI scheme for white goods. As the name suggests PLI that is production linked incentive is an incentive given for the production. That means if you are going to produce more, you will receive more incentive. So recently the scheme was approved for white goods that is for air conditioners and LED lights. And it has been approved with a budget of 6 to 38 crores. Objective is to make India competitive in the manufacturing of these specific products. Apart from that recently union cabinet approved national program on high efficiency solar PV modules. And this is part of PLI scheme. PLI stands for production linked incentive. So the total outlay or total allocation for this is 4500 crores rupee. So this will provide a focus to the manufacturing of solar photovoltaic that is PV modules and this will reduce our dependency on the imports. Sarthak which was in use recently is related to which policy? So it is related to NEP that is national education policy. This NEP was announced in 2020. What is the full form of Sarthak? It is students and teachers holistic advancement through quality education. And recently this was released by Union Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriel Nishank. So few important points. First NEP for its implementation we have Sarthak. It is for students and teachers. NEP was released in 2020. Sarthak was released recently by Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriel Nishank. Now recently Education Minister was also in news as he launched Nano Sniper. So this is an explosive detector. Explosive detector means it is going to detect explosives. And this is world's first micro sensor based explosive trace detector. Recently Education Minister launched this Nano Sniper. It is world's first micro sensor based explosive trace detector. And this has been developed by Nano Sniff Technologies. Now you might be thinking why Education Minister launched this. This is something related to defense and security. This was launched by Education Minister because this Nano Sniff Technology is incubated startup of 
IIT Bombay. So that is why Education Minister comes into picture. Now, apart from this, recently Education Minister of Delhi was also in news and he is Manish Sisodia. So why he was in news? Because recently he launched Lab on Wheels program. And this is a program by DTU. What is DTU? It is Delhi Technological University. So what is this Lab on Wheels? As a part of this program, DTU students will teach government school students and they will teach unprivileged children with the help of a special bus across Delhi. Next question is with reference to astronomy, what is Osiris which was in news recently? Which was in news recently. So Osiris is an exoplanet. Officially it is HD 209458. So it was the first ever exoplanet that was spotted by the astronomers. What is exoplanet? See, exoplanet are those planets which orbit a star other than sun. These planets are known as exoplanet. That means outside the solar system. Exo means outside. So recently this exoplanet Osiris was in news because as per a study published in Nature, it has been found that six chemicals are present in the atmosphere of Osiris. So that is why this entire issue was in news. Next question is blue flag is globally recognized eco label certification provided to beaches from which country? Actually the question is that the organization which provide this blue flag is from which country? So this blue flag certification is given by FWE that is Foundation for Environmental Education and this is an organization whose headquarter is in Denmark. So why this concept of blue flag was in news? Actually it was in news because our Odisha is trying to work to get blue flag certification for new beaches and the fishermen of Odisha are not happy with this. Why they are not happy? Because they demand that before giving status of blue flag to certain beaches, they should, that means these fishermen should be provided an alternative sea route to anchor their boats. See, in simplest term, when you provide a status of blue flag, certain activities are prohibited in those areas and you will have to maintain the standards on those beach. Now, the argument of these fishers is that if you are going to provide blue flag status, this will create a problem for them. So, before you provide status, please provide us alternative route so that we can anchor our boats. So that is why this entire issue was in news. Now Odisha is trying to provide the blue flag status to different beaches. These are Niladri beach in Puri district, Gopalpur and Pati Sonpur in Ganjam district and Talasari and Udaipur in Balasore district. So their argument is that if you are going to provide blue flag certificate or blue flag tag to these beaches, then the 500 meter land is developed. So where we are going to anchor our fishing boats. This is their argument. Now recently Odisha was also in news because 1st of April was celebrated as Utkal Divas or Odisha Divas. Odisha was also in news because of Utkal Keshri. So Utkal Keshri is Dr. Hari Krishna Mehtab. Recently Dr. Hari Krishna Mehtab was in news as Prime Minister Modi released Hindi translation of a book Odisha Itihas. So this Odisha Itihas is a book authored by Dr. H. Mehtab and recently Prime Minister inaugurated this book or Prime Minister released the Hindi translation of this book. Dr. H. Mehtab had served as the Chief Minister of Odisha from 1946 to 1950 and then from 1956 to 61. Recently Odisha was also in news because of mask abhiyan to prevent the transmission of COVID-19. Now in the context of COVID-19, recently Prime Minister Modi appealed the Chief Minister of States to organize Tika Utsa to celebrate the vaccination process. And this is to be organized from 11th of April to 14th of April. Now objective is to vaccinate maximum people and to focus on zero wastage of COVID-19 vaccines. Recently Prime Minister was also in news because of his book Exam Warriors. Apart from this book, recently Few more books were in news. One is Manohar Parikar, Brilliant Mind, Simple Life. So this is a book authored by Nitin Gokhale. And second book is Names of Women. And this book is authored by Jeet Thail. So in one question, we have covered Odisha Itihas, we have covered Mask Abhiyan, we have covered Tika Utsav, Exam Warriors, a book on Manohar Parikar and a book named Names of Women. And it is authored by Jeet Thail. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ए हंड्रेड करोड फास्ट पेट्रोल वेसल नेम्ड पी एस जोरोस्टर वॉज हैंडेड ओवर टू विच कंट्री बाई इंडिया सो दिस हैज बीन हैंडेड ओवर टू सेशल्स रिसेंटली इट वॉज हैंडेड ओवर एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया पार्टिसिपेटेड इन वर्चुअल मीटिंग विद द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ सेशल्स एंड ही इज वॉवेल राम कलावन सो दिस इज द फोर्थ Indian main petrol boat which was gifted to Seychelles since 2005 and it has been built by GRC that is Garden Reach Ship Builders and Engineers the headquarters of this GRC is in Kolkata now in a similar development recently INS Sarvekshak participated in a joint hydrographic survey in Mauritius apart from that INS Virat was also in news actually INS Virat has been decommissioned by Indian Navy now this has been bought by a private company and the name of company is Sri Ram Group it is a private company based in Gujarat now in the context of Seychelles recently a doctrine was in use it is sagar what is sagar sagar stands for security and growth for all in region so this is our doctrine our in the sense doctrine by India now Seychelles was also in use as it is the first african country to receive made in india covid 19 vaccine so sagar is our doctrine for growth and prosperity in the indian ocean region now recently this indian ocean region was also in use as us navy carried out freedom of navigation in india's eez what is eez it is exclusive economic zone now our argument is that usa navy conducted this without our prior permission so that is why it was controversial the government has said that as per un clause prior consent is mandatory what is un clause it is united nations convention on laws of sea so this term is important freedom of navigation eez that is exclusive economic zone uncls that is united nation convention on laws of sea as per this convention the prior consent is essential before any ship is allowed to pass through country's waters so us navy carried out the freedom of navigation operation in indian waters in indian ocean region near lakshadweep islands now similarly one more case was in news and it is a case of enrica lexi so this is your homework what is the entire case and why it was in news recently it is a case related to italian marines so please read about it. next question is when was the united nations trust fund for counter terrorism established so this was established in 2009 so why it was in news recently because india has recently contributed additional 5 lakh us dollars to this united nations trust fund for counter terrorism so with this our total contribution is 1.05 million us dollars now in the context of terrorism recently first meeting of india maldives joint working group on counter terrorism was organized so why it is so significant because it is the first meeting or first such meeting between india and maldives apart from this one more anti terrorist structure was in use and it is rats it is regional anti terrorist structure so it is associated to sco sco is shanghai cooperation organization headquarters is in beijing beijing is in china the headquarters of rats is in tashkent tashkent is in uzbekistan please note that eight countries are the members of sco out of which four are india china pakistan russia and remaining four are central asian countries except turkmenistan recently china was also in news because of basic what is basic this is a grouping of four countries these four countries are brazil south africa india and china so why this basic organization was in news because recently the 30th session of this basic was organized and from indian side our environment minister mr prakash jawadekar participated now in the context of terror there was one more organization fatf that is financial action task force so it has twin objectives one is to prevent terror financing and second is money laundering recently fatf was in news as pakistan has demanded more time to complete 27 point action plan so that it can get out of gray list of fatf right now pakistan is in gray list so pakistan was put under gray list of fatf for terror financing and for money laundering now answer in comment box what is the formal name of this gray list recently pakistan was also in news as fifa suspended pakistan and chad football federations for political interference by their respective governments 
Next question is as an acknowledgement of gender equality, which country replaced the term AMN by aviators? So recently, Australia was in news because of this decision. Australian Air Force personnel will now be known as aviators rather than AMN. Why? Because Australia has the highest female participation in any branch of Australia's military in Royal Australian Air Force. In simplest term, previously, the personnel of Air Force of Australia were known as AMN. Now this term is obviously not suitable for women Air Force personnel. So now they have said that instead of AMN, we are going to use the term aviator since this is the gender neutral term. Now Australia was also in news because of Quad. It was also in news because of Breton war crime report. So this is a war crime report on the crimes committed by ADF that is Australian Defence Forces in Afghanistan. Australia was also in news because of 2 plus 2 dialogue. So 2 plus 2 dialogue is between the Defence Minister and Minister of External Affairs of India and their counterparts of Australia. Previously this was of secretariat level but recently it was elevated to ministerial level. Recently MEA that is Ministry of External Affairs was also in news because of PDOT. What is PDOT? It is Pre-Departure Orientation Training Program. So Ministry of External Affairs has launched this first online Pre-Departure Orientation Training Program for Migrant Workers. So it aims to train the maximum number of prospective migrants before their departure. MEA was also in use because of Raisina Dialogue. So Raisina Dialogue is organized by MEA in association with ORF. What is ORF? It is Observer Research Foundation. So this time that means this 2021 edition is going to be fully digital. Next question is what is India's net direct tax collection excluding refunds for fiscal year 2021? So it is 9.45 trillion. Now the problem is that this is for the first time in last four years the direct tax collection has fallen below 10 trillion mark obviously because of coronavirus pandemic situation. However, please note that this year's actual tax collection is more than the revised estimates. Now, in the context of finance, recently one more event was in news. As per IMF, India's debt to GDP ratio increased from 74% to 90% during COVID-19 pandemic. Why? Because government borrowed more in order to create a stimulus or fiscal stimulus. Next question is the Central Mine Planning and Design Institute is a fully owned subsidiary of which PSU? So it is a subsidiary of CIL that is Coal India Limited. The name of this company is Central Mine Planning and Design Institute. It is a Mineratna company and it is a subsidiary of Coal India Limited. Why it was in use? Because recently it got approval from Ministry of Civil Aviation to use drones to survey the coal fields. So now it can use drones. Recently BCCI also got approval to use drones for live recording of matches. BCCI is Cricket Control Authority of our country. Now, in the context of cricket, one more event was in news. It is related to Chandra Naidu. So, who was Chandra Naidu? She was India's first cricket commentator and she passed away recently. Apart from her, recently few other personalities passed away. Recently, Digvijay Singh Jala passed away. He was first Union Environment Minister and he was MLA from Wankaner in Gujarat. So he was the first education minister of India under Prime Minister Indra Gandhi from 1982 to 1984. In addition to him, recently UK's Prince Philip passed away and he was the husband of Queen Elizabeth II. Next question is the three-banded rose finch declared as the 1340th bird's disease in India was spotted in which Indian state? So it was spotted in Arunachal Pradesh. It has become the 1340th species of bird family in India. So you just need to remember the name and the state in which it was spotted. An ancient city named Aten, which was in use recently, has been discovered in which country? So it was recently discovered in Egypt. And this is largest ancient city ever discovered. The name of the city is Rise of Aten. Now the capital of Egypt is Cairo. Recently, Egypt was also in news because of Suez Canal. So this is the Suez Canal. This is Mediterranean Sea. And this Suez Canal was in news because of blockade which was caused by Ever Given. Now, recently Egypt was also in news because of its first female ship captain. And the name is Marwa Al-Sail Heather. So 
Siva's news because she was wrongly blamed for the Suez Canal blockade. She is the first female ship captain of Egypt. Next question is what is the name of global experiment which aims to measure the impact of reduction in ambient human sounds in ocean. So the name of this experiment is IQOE that is International Quiet Ocean Experiment. It was started in 2011 to create a time series of measurements of ambient sound in different ocean locations. So why this was in news? Because recently a team of scientists from this IQOE has started experiments to understand the impact of reduction in the human activity because of COVID-19 lockdown. So because of COVID-19 there was a lockdown and this experiment is now trying to understand the impact of reduction in human activity because of this COVID-19 lockdown. Next question is HCCR portal which was recently launched by Ayush Ministry is associated with which field? So this portal is associated with CCRH. Now what is CCRH? It is Central Council for Research in Homeopathy. So it is an apex research organization under Ayush Ministry. Why it was in news recently? Because it launched this HCCR portal. What is HCCR? It is Homeopathic Clinical Case Repository. So this portal was recently launched on the occasion of World Homeopathy Day. So this World Homeopathy Day was celebrated on 10th of April and on this occasion CCRH that is Central Council for Research in Homeopathy organized a conference and the theme of that conference was Homeopathy a Roadmap for Integrative Medicine. So what is the objective of this HCCR portal? Objective is to create a standard platform for homeopathic clinic researchers and medical students to enter the clinical cases. Now 10th of April was World Homeopathy Day. On the other hand 11th of April was observed as World Parkinson's Day. So what is Parkinson's disease? It is a nervous system disorder. So this Parkinson's Day is observed to spread awareness about Parkinson's disease and the disease is related to nervous system of human beings. 11th of April is also celebrated as National Safe Motherhood Day. Actually 11th of April also marks the birth anniversary of Kasturba Gandhi. She was the wife of Mahatma Gandhi. On the other hand 12th of April is observed as International Day of Human Space Flight. So 12th of April was International Day of Human Space Flight. Apart from that recently Prime Minister announced that we should celebrate Tika Utsav. So this is related to vaccination for COVID-19 and this is to be celebrated from 11th of April to 14th of April. Actually these two days are very significant because 11th of April marks the birth anniversary of Jyotiba Phule and 14th of April is the birth anniversary of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Now in the context of COVID-19 recently one more initiative was in use. So the Tika Utsav is related to the vaccination of COVID-19. So recently one more COVID-19 related initiative was in use and it is crushing the curve. So this is an initiative started by Kerala government to stop the transmission and to promote vaccination. So this is a vaccination drive against COVID-19. In addition to that recently Punjab was in news as state government of Punjab appointed Bollywood actor Sonu Sood as the COVID vaccination ambassador. Idea is to spread awareness about vaccination so that people do not hesitate to vaccinate themselves. In addition to that recently government of India decided to impose ban on export of Remdesivir and Remdesivir API till the situation of COVID-19 improves in our country. This is a medicine which is used in cases of COVID-19. Next question is advanced antiquities management system which was in use recently is a system launched by which state or union territory. So this is a system related to Goa administration. Recently Directorate of Archives and Archaeology of Goa inaugurated this advanced antiquities management system. So this is a first of its kind system in our country. So why this was launched? This was launched for the storage of antiquities. Now in the context of archaeology we have ASI. What is ASI? It is Archaeological Survey of India. So this is an organization associated with Culture Ministry and present DZ that is Director General of ASI is V. Vidyavati. Next question is 
as per recent notification from finance ministry a basic saving bank account can be opened in which institution so this can be opened in post office recently this was announced by the finance ministry as per this recent notification there is no minimum deposit requirement for opening a bank account in the post office so there won't be any requirement for maintaining minimum balance now apart from that recently rbi that is our central bank increased the bank balance limit for payment banks so previously the limit was 1 lakh rupees now it has been increased to 2 lakhs apart from that recently airtel payment bank was also in news why because it announced reward 1 2 3 saving bank account now recently rbi was in news because of dsib status dsib stands for domestic systemically important banks so three banks are given the status of dsib these three are sdfc icici and state bank of india recently sdfc bank was in news because of its startup grant 2021 so this is an initiative by sdfc bank and with the help of this initiative the bank provides support to the different startups recently as a part of this initiative it selected 21 startups now to promote startups we have a initiative it is startup india and this initiative is by commerce ministry on the other hand we have stand up india this initiative is by dfs that is department of financial services and it is under finance ministry recently the startup india was in news because government has launched startup seed fund Next question is which constitutional body has recently stated that all adults above 18 were free to choose a religion of their choice so this was recently in news because of a verdict by supreme court so supreme court recently held that the word propagate mentioned in the indian constitution permits any one who is above 18 to freely choose a religion of his or her choice now in the context of constitution article 25 28 guarantees the right to freedom of religion and article 25 explicitly mention that all the persons are equally entitled to the freedom of conscience and they have right to profess practice and propagate the religion now answer in comment box whether this article 25 is applicable to the foreigners also means even foreigners do get this freedom as a part of this article 25 or not now recently Supreme Court was also in news because of new CJI that is new chief justice of India so justice N V Ramanna is going to be the new CJI he is going to take charge on 24th of April apart from that recently supreme court was also in news because of a new portal and it is S U P A C E it is driven by artificial intelligence so what is S U P A C E it is supreme court portal for assistance in courts efficiency so this portal aims to provide assistance to the courts with the help of artificial intelligence next question is which municipal corporation of india issued the first green bond in our country so this was recently issued by the gaziabad municipal corporation and it is the first of its kind in our country what are green bonds green bonds are the bonds where the proceeds or the money will be used for the green or environment friendly projects So this Gaziabad Municipal Corporation is a part of Uttar Pradesh. Recently it issued green bonds and it raised a sum of 150 crore rupees with the help of these bonds. And this money will be used for creating water treatment infrastructure in the city. These bonds were listed in BSC. What is BSC? It is Bombay Stock Exchange. So Bombay Stock Exchange is the stock exchange in our country and it is located on Dalal Street in Mumbai. and it was established in 1875 it is the oldest stock exchange of asia now in the context of municipal bonds which are also known as muni bonds recently sebi that is securities and exchange board of india issued guidelines so the question is about municipal bonds who is the regulator sebi is the regulator not the rbi please note this which is the first municipal corporation to issue municipal bonds so it is bangalore or bengaluru municipal corporation it was the first one to issue such municipal bonds in 1997 so recently sebi issued guidelines or eligibility criteria to issue the municipal bonds first criteria is that the municipalities which are issuing such bonds must not have negative net worth in 
each of the three previous years. Second such criteria is that they must not have defaulted the repayment. And third criteria is that the municipality, the promoters and directors must not be enlisted in the willful defaulters list which is published by Reserve Bank of India. And who are willful defaulters? Willful defaulters are those people who have the capability to repay their loans but who are not willing to repay. For example, Vijay Malia. So he do have the capability but he is not willing to pay. Next question is which body collaborated with Hindustan Unilever and Google for conducting artificial intelligence for agriculture hackathon? So this is done by MyGOV India. So these three entities that is Hindustan Unilever, Google and MyGOV India collaborated for a hackathon in the field of agriculture. Idea is to provide a platform to find innovative solutions for the water conservation in the field of agriculture and to bring startups in the field of agriculture. Now this AI stands for artificial intelligence. Recently that means last year RAISE summit was organized for artificial intelligence. What is RAISE? It is responsible AI, the responsible artificial intelligence for social empowerment. So this RAISE summit was hosted by MEITY that is Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Next question is which institution is set to launch a handbook for online dispute resolution. So this is being done by Niti Ayo. Niti Ayo is an executive body. Recently it was in use as it has planned to launch a handbook for online dispute resolution. Now in the context of trade related disputes recently Singapore Convention was in use. So Singapore Convention is also known as UNISC that is United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreements. Answer in comment box whether India is a party to this convention or not. Now Niti Aayog stands for National Institution for Transforming India. Recently Singapore was in news because it became the first country to ratify RCEP. So what is RCEP? It is Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. So recently Singapore became the first country to ratify this RCEP. Please note that India already decided to quit this RCEP trade agreement. This RCEP must be ratified by at least six ASEAN countries. ASEAN is association of South Asian countries and this is a gr grouping of 10 countries. So out of 10 at least six must ratify RCEP along with three known ASEAN countries should ratify it then only this RCEP will come in force. Recently Singapore was also in news as the scientists from Singapore have developed a technology to interact with plants and this has been given the name RoboPlants. So scientists have used the technology to trigger a Venus flytrap plant and this Venus flytrap plant is a carnivorous plant. Apart from this RCEP one more trade agreement was in use and it is CPTPP. What is CPTPP? Actually previously it was TPP that is Trans-Pacific Partnership. Later USA decided to quit this and later it became CPTPP. It stands for Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. So recently UK decided to join the CPTPP. Recently UK was also in news because UK based Kane Energy has decided to file lawsuits against India as a part of 1.2 billion dollars award by International Arbitration Tribunal. So this is your homework why Kane Energy has filed lawsuit against Government of India and what is this entire issue? Which country has launched a hotline to report online defamatory comments done by historical nihilist? So first thing first, this is done by CCP that is Chinese Communist Party. So anyone who do not agree with CCP or who do not agree with the views of CCP is considered as historical nihilism. That means who do not agree with the actions of CCP in the past or the description of past events. Now China has launched a separate hotline to report such online comments which tend to defend the ruling government party that is Chinese Communist Party. Please note that this year CCP is celebrating 100th anniversary. Recently China was also in news because of Ganbala radar station. So China opened its 5G signal base at world's highest radar station and this is Ganbala radar station 
Next question is which movie won the British Academy of Film and Television Arts Best Picture Award? So, Nomadland won the Best Picture Award at BAFTA Awards. BAFTA stands for British Academy of Film and Television Arts. And Close How, a Chinese filmmaker, became the second woman and became the first woman of color to win the BAFTA Award for Best Director for the movie Nomadland. The Best Actor Award was given to Anthony Hopkins and Best Actress Award was given to Frances McDormand. Next question is, what is the original name of Antarctica's Doomsday Glacier which was in news recently? So the original name is Thwaites Glacier. It is in Antarctica and it is also known as Doomsday Glacier. So as you can see, this is the geographical location of this glacier. This is Antarctica, this is South Pole. So why it was in news? Because as for the researchers, this glacier is melting at a very higher rate than it was originally thought. And this glacier is so large that it contains enough water to raise the world sea level by more than half a meter. Next question is with reference to the process of vaccination, what is the full form of AEFI? So AEFI stands for adverse events following immunization. That means these are the events that may occur after immunization. Now, in the context of COVID vaccination, recently this term was in use, AEFI, that is adverse events following immunization. Apart from that, recently, Subject Expert Committee recommended the emergency use of Sputnik vaccine. This is a vaccine by Russia. Now, DCGI, that is Drug Controller General of India, is going to consider this recommendation. DCGI is under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The other two vaccines which are already approved are Covishield and Covaxin. Recently, Sonu Sood was appointed as the vaccine ambassador by Punjab government. Recently, Punjab was in news because of Jallianwala Bagh massacre. So, this is also known as Amritsar massacre and it is in news because this event or this massacre happened on 13th of April in 1919. So, this year we commemorated 102nd anniversary of this massacre. Recently Punjab was also in news as Punjab government announced that they will pay MSP that is minimum support price directly to the farmers. As of now MSP is provided to the farmers through adhatis. These are known as commission agents. Next question is commerce and industry minister launched trade facilitation mobile app of which office? So this is an app of DZFT. What is DZFT? It is Directorate General of Foreign Trade and DZFT is under Commerce Ministry. So this app will provide artificial intelligence based assistance and all the services of DZFT. Recently Commerce Minister Pius Goel was also in news as he launched eSanta app or eSanta platform for marine products. Now with the help of this platform, the farmers can sell their produce on this portal. Now for the promotion of marine products, we have MPEDA, that is Marine Products Export Development Authority and this is under Commerce Ministry. Now MPEDA have one center and it is National Center for Aquaculture. Recently Commerce Ministry was also in news as it notified rules for copyright. Please note that copyright regime in our country is governed by two regulations. One is Copyright Act of 1957 and second is Copyright Act of 2013. Next question is what is the name of movement to be launched by the health minister to emphasis on nutritionally balanced diet. So the name of this movement is Aha Kranti. Objective is to provide information about nutritionally balanced diet. Mission of this motto is good diet, good cognition. So this program will train teachers and then these teachers will teach the students and their families the significance of balanced nutritional diet. Now, in the context of nutrition, government already launched Portion Abhihar and September month is celebrated as Portion Ma. Apart from that, recently 16th of March to 31st of March was celebrated as Portion Pakwada. Now, in the context of nutrition, we have National Council on Nutrition. Answer in comment box, who is the chairperson of this council? Now when I ask some question, so as a viewer, it is your responsibility to answer that. It is going to help you 
you will be able to recall it or remember it for a longer period of time. But nowadays, students need everything ready made. So if a question is asked, they will scroll in the comment section and then they will see and take a screenshot. This is similar to those person who think that if I will go to the gym and if I will see a fit person, I will be fit also. So good luck. And he is coming to the main point. So for elderly person, recently government launched a different initiative. It is portion abhyan for elderly person and it has been launched by Ministry of social justice and empowerment. Now in the context of nutrition recently a report was in news. It is global food policy research. Global food policy report. So this report is published by International Food Policy Research Institute and the theme of this year's report is transforming food systems after COVID-19. Next question is which international body has given note to IMF that is International Monetary Fund for issue of fresh SDR. SDR stands for special drawing rights. So this has been done by G20. G20 is a group of advanced economies. Recently finance ministry of G20 members have given their approval to IMF for issuing of fresh SDR amounting to 650 billion dollars to G20 member countries. Please note that SDR is neither a currency nor a claim on IMF. The value of SDR is decided on the basis of basket of currencies and this basket of currencies include dollar of USA, Euro, Japanese Yen, Pound Sterling and Chinese Renminbi. So why this approval for fresh SDR was given? This was given because in Corona situation all the low income countries are facing financial crisis. So this new decision will help to boost the reserve of all countries and therefore it is going to benefit especially the low income countries so that they do not feel distressed because of this pandemic situation. Next question is as per recent data the population of which species has doubled in Chilka Lake. So it is the population of dolphins. Chilka Lake is in the state of Odisha and this Chilka Lake is the India's largest brackish water lagoon. It is known for Eravadi dolphins. Now recently one dolphin sanctuary was in news and it is Vikram Sila Ganga dolphin sanctuary. It is in state of Bihar. Next question is Artemis program is undertaken by which organization? So it is related to NASA. It is NASA's manned mission to the moon. That means NASA is going to send its human beings to moon and it will land the first person of color on moon and the first woman on the moon as a part of mission in 2024. Recently NASA was also in news because of Odyssey. So Odyssey is a mission of NASA for Mars. Recently it was in news because it completed 20 years. So it was launched in 2001 and this Odyssey mission detected large amount of hydrogen on Mars. NASA is a space agency of USA. Recently NASA was also in news because of UAE space program. So UAE is United Arab Emirates. Recently it announced first female astronaut. So the name of first female astronaut is Nora Al Matroshi. So she is the first female astronaut of UAE. Apart from that one more astronaut was announced by UAE and his name is Mohammed Al Mullah. So these two astronauts of UAE will get special space training at the Johnson Center of NASA. And this Johnson Space Center is in Houston. Recently UAE was also in news because Indian business tycoon Yusuf Ali MA got the top civilian award in UAE. Recently one more space recently one more space initiative was in news and it is a space initiative by SpaceX. SpaceX is a private company headed by Elon Musk. So recently SpaceX announced four member crew for the world's first all civilian Earth Orbiter Mission and the name of this mission is Inspiration 4. Next question is what is the overall capex that is capital expenditure by 37 large central public sector enterprises and government departments for fiscal year 2021. So it is 4.6 lakh crore. This was the combined capital expenditure by 37 large central public sector enterprises and department and undertakings. The capital expenditure target was 5 lakh crore. Now among these entities NHAI 
that is national highway authority of india was the largest investor with capex see first thing first what is capital expenditure so if you spent money for the acquisition of say assets that means if your money is used for long term purpose then it is capital expenditure on the other hand if you are using money for day to day operations then it is revenue expenditure revenue expenditure are short term expenses and they are recurring in nature generally recurring means they occur on regular intervals so coming back to the original point nhi is the largest investor and for the first time it has overtaken indian railways so this is important point because for the first time in terms of capital expenditure nhi has overtaken indian railways nhi is national highway authority of india it is under ministry of road transport and highways so capex of nhi was 1.25 lakh crore the capex of indian railways was 1.24 lakh crore ioc that is indian oil corporation was on third position its capex was 30000 crores next question is which institute has launched the little guru app so recently iccr that is indian council for cultural relations celebrated its 71st foundation day and at the celebrations in swami vivekanand cultural center at the indian embassy in beijing the little guru app was also launched this is the world's first gamified sanskrit learning app answer in comment box whether sanskrit is a part of language mentioned in the it schedule or not iccr was founded in 1950 and it was founded by maulana abul kalam azad he was a first education minister of independent india swami vivekanand represented india and represented hinduism at the parliament of world's religion and this was the first such event it held in 1893 this was the first world's parliament of religion it held in 1893 and it held in chicago please note that the perth university of swami vivekanand is on 12th of january and in our country it is celebrated as national youth day chicago is in usa recently usa was in news because of jcpoa that is joint comprehensive plan of action it is also known as iran nuclear deal recently iran was in news because of uranium enrichment first thing first why usa was in news because of jcpoa because during the regime of donald trump usa decided to quit this jcpoa this deal was signed to prevent iran from making nuclear weapons now usa is out of this agreement and usa has reimposed sanctions on iran so now to pressurize other members iran has started working on nuclear weapons or iran has restarted working on nuclear weapons and that is why recently natanj nuclear facility in iran was in news because of uranium enrichment this nuclear facility was also in news as recently iran blamed israel for attack on this nuclear facility recently iran was also in news because of its 25 years agreement with china recently china was in news because of uyghurs these are the muslim minority in china recently japan announced that it may join five eyes alliance to restrict china's actions against uyghur muslims five eyes alliance is a grouping of intelligence sharing and it is a grouping of five countries these five countries are australia and new zealand uk us and canada recently japan was also in news because of fukushima nuclear power plant actually this nuclear power plant was in news recently so what is this entire story see in 2011 this nuclear power plant was devastated because of earthquake and tsunami now japanese government has approved a plan and as per the plan the radioactive water from this nuclear power plant will be treated and then it will be released in ocean so that is why a lot of activists are opposing this decision of japanese government they are saying that this radioactive water even after treatment may have harmful ramifications on the ocean water So that is why this Fukushima nuclear power plant was in news. It is in Japan. India has extended the ceasefire agreement with the three insurgent groups of which state for one more year. So these are the insurgents of Nagaland and government to be specific MHA that is Ministry of Home Affairs extended ceasefire agreement with NSCN and its 
three branches till April 2022. See these three that is NSCN, NK, R and K. These are the insurgents groups in Nagaland. What is their demand? Their demand is sovereign Naga state and it is given the name Nagalim. So they want that there should be a sovereign Naga state which would consist of all the areas which are inhabited by Naga people in the northeast of India and in the northwest of Myanmar. So as you can see in the map, this is Arunachal Pradesh, this is Nagaland, this is Manipur and Mizoram, this is Tripura, Meghalaya and Assam and this is Sikkim. Now recently, the state of Meghalaya was in news because of Amparin Leongdo Committee. Recently, this committee has submitted a report and as per this committee, three out of every thousand pregnant women in Meghalaya are tested HIV positive. So this is very, very serious issue. And the number of cases in the state of Meghalaya, number of HIV positive cases in the state of Meghalaya are increasing alarmingly. Please note that in March 2021, Meghalaya had launched health policy. And this new health policy, which was introduced in March 2021, does include AIDS, but it does not prioritize the issue. So you can see it is such a big issue that three out of every 1000 pregnant women are tested HIV positive. Apart from that, the state of Manipur was in news because of Sajibu Cheroba. So this is the Lunar New Year festival, which is celebrated in the state of Manipur. It is celebrated by the people who follow the religion of Sanmahism and these people are in Manipur. Next question is Heidki Matsuyama is the first Japanese player to claim a major championship in which sports? So he is the first Japanese player to claim a major championship in golf. Recently Japan was also in news because of few other events. Japan is the host of Tokyo Olympic Games. Japan was also in news because of 2 plus 2 dialogue. It was also in news because of Quad. Quad is quadrilateral security dialogue. It was in news because of Malabar exercise. It was also in news as it showed its willingness to join Five Eyes Alliance. So this 2 plus 2 dialogue is with Australia, Japan and USA. Recently Australia was in news because of tropical cyclone Seroza. So this tropical cyclone Seroza hit the Western Australia. Five Eyes Alliance is an intelligence sharing alliance of five countries. These five countries are US, Canada, UK, Australia and New Zealand. Recently, New Zealand was in news as it became the first country in the world to introduce a climate change law for financial sector. Recently, New Zealand was also in news because of New Zealand cricketer Kane Williamson. So why he was in news? Because he was awarded Sir Richard Hadley Medal. Now coming back to this climate change law for the financial sector. So this law requires the financial firms to explain how they are going to manage the climate related risk and opportunities. Next question is the day on which the Indian Army launched Operation Meghdoot is observed as which special day. So this Operation Meghdoot was launched by Indian Army. It was launched on 13th of April in 1984. Name is Operation Meghdoot and it is commemorated every year as Siachin Day. So this was the operation which was conducted by Indian Army to secure Siachin Glacier. It is the world's highest and coldest battlefield. So this was celebrated on 13th of April. On the other hand, 14th of April was celebrated as the birth anniversary of Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. This is also known as Bhim Jayanti. Dr. Ambedkar was given the Bharat Ratra Award in 1990. He was given this award posthumously. On the other hand, 14th of April was also observed as World Chagas Disease Day. 13th of April was also observed as International Turban Day. 13th of April is also important because on this day in 1919, Jaliawala Bagh massacre event happened. So this time we observed the 102nd anniversary of Jaliawala Bagh massacre. Answer in comment box. Which event was termed as Himalayan blunder by Gandhiji? Next question is which institution launched Poshan Gyan, a national digital repository on health and nutrition? So this has been done by Niti Aayog in partnership with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Asoka University. Name of initiative is Poshan Gyan. Poshan stands for 
nutrition gyan stands for knowledge so it is related to the knowledge of nutrition niti ayog is an executive body niti stands for national institution for transforming india so this portion gyan is a national digital repository on health and nutrition it is a digital database now in the context of nutrition recently union health minister launched ahar kranti to spread awareness about nutrition apart from that recently ministry of social justice and empowerment had launched portion abhiyan for elderly people the objective is to provide nutritional support to the elderly people the month of september is observed as the portion ma to spread awareness about nutrition now for elderly people recently principal scientific advisor to government k vijay raghavan launched manas app to promote the well being across different age groups with a special emphasis on elderly people so what is the full form of manas manas stands for mental health and normalcy augmentation system now recently niti aayog was also in news because it launched the second version or 2.0 version of india energy dashboards so this dashboard has been launched to achieve the development goals that is to achieve the sustainable development goals and to focus on india's indc that is intended nationally determined contribution so these are related to paris agreement apart from that niti ayog was also in news as along with atal innovation mission it has signed an agreement with daso systems to work towards providing a digitally rich ecosystem of innovation that means to promote innovation now in the context of indc recently a committee was in news and it is apex committee for implementation of paris agreement answer in comment books who is the chair person of this committee i know on regular basis i keep on saying but hardly 30 40 people are going to answer it this itself shows the level of seriousness see those people who clear exam they are not extraordinary they are just consistent they are just honest towards themselves they don't fool themselves that we are studying and they are just watching youtube videos this is a new trend i have noticed people spend more than 50% of their study time watching lectures on youtube without any pen or paper or without any active participation and then they think why they are not able to clear nothing can replace self study i know on youtube you will see n number of videos in fact youtube is flooded with such content that watch these videos and get show short selection or and watch these videos to get this much marks that's good for business because those are catchy thumbnail and most of the people click them and watch them but trust me there is no shortcut yeah you will understand it after wasting your attempts after wasting your parents money <laughs> anyways enough of gyan next question is the national highway authority of india is to deploy nsv to provide better roads what does nsv stand for so nsv stand for network survey vehicle so in order to provide better quality of roads nhi is set to deploy nsv nhi is national highway authority of india it is under ministry of road transport and highways so nhi has made road condition survey using nsv mandatory at the time of certifying the completion of project and every 6 months thereafter so for the first time once the project is completed after that in order to check the completion a survey is conducted so for that nsv is mandatory now and it will be conducted after every 6 months in order to ensure the quality of roads now in the context of road infrastructure recently one more event was in news as environment minister mr prakash jawdekar announced that 1 crore plants has been geo tagged along with national highways nhi was also in news as it was the top entity in terms of capex that is capital expenditure we had already discussed this issue in our last lecture now in this context recently one more public sector enterprise was in news it is ed cil so why it was in news because it has paid its highest ever dividend answer in comment box it is under which union ministry next question is what is the name of farthest gamma ray emitting galaxy that has been discovered recently so the name of this galaxy is narrow line cefert it is the name of galaxy recently it was discovered and it is the farthest gamma ray emitting galaxy that has been discovered so far it is about 31 billion light years away from the earth 
Our galaxy is Milky Way. Light year is a unit of length. Please remember this. For space objects, we use light years to specify their distance. Next question is, by what percentage the net indirect tax collection in 2021 has grown over the previous year? So, it is 12.3 percentage. The tax collection was 10.71 lakh and the target was 9.89 lakh. So, this indirect tax collection included GST, customs and excise duties. Net collection from GST was 5.48 lakh crore during 2020-21. Please note that, please note that. This is 8% drop as compared to previous year. So you just need to remember the trends. In case of GST, the collection declined as compared to previous year. However, in case of indirect tax, total indirect tax collection, GST is a part of this indirect tax collection. This collection increased and the growth is approximately 12%. That is custom tax collection witnessed a growth of 21%. Next question is Central Asia Center for Trade and economic cooperation is being constructed by which countries? So this is being constructed by the two Central Asian countries. One is Uzbekistan, another is Kazakhstan. So this will provide more business opportunities and this will serve as a large industrial trade and logistic platform for these two countries. Now please note that these two countries that is Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan are the part of SCO. SCO is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So, four Central Asian countries are the member of SCO, except Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan is fifth Central Asian country. So, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan or Tajikistan are the members of SCO. Remaining four members are Russia, China, India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan became the full-fledged member of SCO after Astana summit in 2017. Headquarters of SCO is in Beijing and SCO have won RATS organization. It is regional anti-terrorist structure. Next question is, who has been appointed as the chief election commissioner? So, he is Mr. Sushil Chandra. He is going to succeed Mr. Sunil Aroda, who retired, who retired recently. Now, apart from him, recently few other personalities were in news. One is Duti Chand. So, she was in news because she was selected for Chhattisgarh Virni Award. In addition to her, recently Siddharth Singh Longjam has been appointed as the next DZ, that is Director General of NADA. What is NADA? It is National Anti-Doping Agency. Apart from him, Adil Janulbhai, the chairperson of QCI, that is Quality Council of India, has been appointed as the chairperson of Capacity Building Commission. This Capacity Building Commission has been established under a national program for civil services capacity building. This is also known as Mission Karamyogi. In addition to him, recently, Alfred Aho, was in news because of AM Turing Award. So this AM Turing Award is considered as the Nobel Prize of Computing. So along with him, the award was given to Jeffrey David Ullman. Apart from him, recently Joshua Osmani was in news as Joshua Osmani has been selected as the President by the Parliament of Kosovo. In addition to that, Guillermo Loso has been selected as the new president of Ecuador. European Commission has planned to raise what amount annually until 2026 to make its economy green and digital. So it is 150 billion euros and this will be done till 2026. That means European Commission is going to borrow 150 billion euros till 2026. Why it is being done? It is being done to make its economy greener, that means less carbon emission and more digitization. Now recently, European Union was in news because of carbon border agreement. And this agreement or this proposal intends to impose more taxation on those products where carbon emission is more or higher. Recently, this proposal was opposed by basic countries. Basic stands for Brazil, South Africa, India and China. Recently, European Union was also in news as it joined CDRI. CDRI stands for Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. So, it is related to disaster. Apart from that, recently, European Union was also in news as European Union Parliament declared itself as LGBTQ Freedom Zone. So, this provides more rights to the LGBT community. 
Next question is what is the name of tax which is imposed on the non-resident e-commerce operators or service providers. So this taxation is equalization levy. It is also known as or informally it is also known as Google tax. This is a tax which is imposed on non-resident e-commerce companies. So first thing first it is applicable on non-resident. Second is it is applicable on e-commerce service companies or operators. Third thing is that it is a direct tax and it is also known as Google tax. So why it was in news? Because recently equalization levy in India stood at 2057 crore. This is approximately double in comparison to previous year. Now because of this equalization levy, USA is not happy and in fact it has proposed retaliatory tariff on Indian products. Why USA is not happy? Because most of these e-commerce companies are from USA. So their argument is that this equalization levy is discriminatory and it is specifically targeting US companies. However, our stand is that this taxation is common for all the non-resident e-commerce companies and there is no discrimination. Please note that this taxation was introduced in India in 2016. Next question is which financial institution has launched rupee 10,000 crore special refinance facility 2021 to support the housing finance companies. So this has been done by NHB. What is NHB? It is National Housing Bank. So it has launched this 10,000 crore special refinance facility. Why it is being done? It is being done to provide more liquidity or more money to the housing finance companies and other financial institutions in India. See, these are housing finance companies. These provide loans to the people. Again, it is oversimplification just for your understanding. So these companies provide loan to the people, housing loan to the people means people take loan from these companies and they use this money to build their house. Now NHB that is National Housing Bank is going to provide financial support to these companies so that they can provide more loan, more housing loan to the people. So this special refinance facility intends to provide short term refinance support to the housing finance companies and this initiative has been launched by NHB in cooperation with RBI that is Reserve Bank of India. In fact, this special refinance facility is provided by RBI under section 17 of RBI Act of 1934. RBI is Reserve Bank of India. Please note that NHB used to be a subsidiary of RBI. However, Recently, RBI decided to divest its entire stakes in NABARD and in NHB. So now these NHB and NABARD are 100% government entity and RBI do not have any stakes in these two institutions. NHB is the apex regulator for housing sector. Like for insurance sector, we have IRDAI. For stock market, we have SEBI. Similarly, for housing sector, we have NHB as regulator. Next question is from which date the government is set to implement mandatory hallmarking of gold jewelry. So the date is 1st of June 2021. Government of India is set to implement the mandatory hallmarking of gold jewelry and artifacts. Now why this hallmarking is so important? This hallmarking is a purity certification of gold and right now it is voluntary. That means if you want to take it, take it. If you do not want to take it, then do not take it. But from 1st of June 2021, it will be mandatory. Actually, government had announced this in 2019 and the time duration was given to the dwellers so that they can register themselves with BIS. What is BIS? It is Bureau of Indian Standards. Now, this BIS is under Ministry of Consumer Affairs and BIS is established by Bureau of Indian Standards Act of 1986. So it is a statutory body. Next question is what does C in NEZ VAC stand for? So what is NEZ VAC? It is National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID-19. So this expert group was constituted by government of India for the vaccine procurement, for its selection, for the vaccine delivery and for the tracking mechanism. That means for the entire process of vaccination. Recently this group was in news because this group has recommended that COVID vaccines in the foreign countries and vaccines which are granted emergency approval by the authorities of USA and Europe and other countries 
may be given emergency use approval in our country as well so this term is important first is emergency use approval second is this n e g v a c so recently this group recommended that the vaccines which are approved by other countries may be given emergency use approval in our country as well so that we can vaccinate our maximum population now in the context of vaccination recently tika utsav was celebrated till 14th of april 14th of april is the birth anniversary of dr b r ambedkar now on the occasion of birth anniversary of dr ambedkar recently mr ravi shankar prasad launched online grievance management portal of ncsc that is national commission for scheduled cast now in the context of coronavirus few other issues were in news first is this b 1.1.617 so it is a double mutant coronavirus variant and it was first reported in our country in maharashtra in this context there was one more term it is immune escape so suppose this is virus v1 it enters in our body now our body or the immune system of our body will try to kill this virus this way antibodies are used now the problem is that after vac after vaccination the antibodies are created but in certain cases these antibodies which are created after vaccination may not be sufficient to kill this virus now in the case of this double mutant coronavirus variant scientists are worried that it may lead to immune escape that means this double mutant coronavirus variant may not be killed by the antibodies which are generated through vaccination process so this will create a serious problem however nothing is substantial so far now in the context of vaccine so far we have approved three vaccines one is covaxin one is covshield and third is sputnik vaccine from russia covaxin is manufactured by bharat biotech in collaboration with icmr that is indian council of medical research covshield is by serum institute of india in association with astrazeneca now recently government of india approved technology transfer from bharat biotech to hafkin institute so this hafkin institute is a biomedical research institute in india and it is affiliated to university of mumbai next question is which country is set to launch rashid unmanned rover to the moon by next year so this country is uae that is united arab emirates it is set to launch its first unmanned rover to the moon by 2022 and i space named company will trans will transport the rover and the name of rover is rashid now uae is united arab emirates in fact the headquarters of icc is in uae icc is international cricket council so icc is the governing body of cricket at international level in our country at national level bcci is the governing body the headquarters of icc is in dubai and it is in uae previously it was in london in uk but since 2005 the headquarters is in dubai in uae recently uk was also in news as it is going to be the host of cop 26 cop stands for conference of parties so it is related to united nation framework convention on climate change this cop 26 is going to be organized under the presidency of uk cop 25 was organized under the presidency of chile government and it was organized in spain in madrid now recently chile government was also in news because the country witnessed death of more than 4200 tons of salmon it is a variety of fish and this death was because of algal bloom it is a south american country now icc release ranking for the players based on their performance recently odi that is one day international ranking was in news so as per this ranking babar azam is on top position as per odi men's batting ranking that means as per this ranking babar azam from pakistan is the top batsman he replaced our indian skipper virat kohli now recently pakistan was also in news because of ibn abdur rahman so he was a human right activist and he passed away recently so why he was so special because he played a key role to normalize the ties between india 
and Pakistan. In fact, because of his work for normalization of ties between India and Pakistan at that point of time, he was awarded with Raman Magsasi Award. Next question is which board or organization has launched National Nursery Portal? So this has been done by National Horticulture Board that is NHB. The objective of this portal is to create an online market where nurseries and buyers can interact for sale of plants. So nurseries and buyers can interact. So like on Amazon, you purchase items. Similarly, on this portal, you can purchase plants or plant saplings. NHB is National Horticulture Board. Horticulture is cultivation of plants in gardens to produce food or medicinal ingredients. So, for example, cultivation of flowers, fruits, nuts, all these are part of horticulture. Next question is, which technology company has entered the renewable energy market in India? So, this is Facebook. Recently, Facebook has signed an agreement with CleanMax and this is first of its kind deal for Facebook in any country. So both these companies that is Facebook and CleanMax are going to work together to supply renewable energy power and they are going to work together for a 32 megawatt wind energy project and this project is situated in Karnataka. Next question is which union ministry has launched the Eat Smart Cities Challenge and Transport for All Challenge. So this is done by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Two initiatives were launched. One is Eat Smart Cities Challenge and second is Transport for All Challenge. Eat Smart Cities Challenge was organized in association with FSS in association with FSS AI, that is Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. So it is related to food safety. FSS AI is a statutory body under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So the objective of this initiative is to encourage smart cities to develop a sustainable food environment. Transport for All initiative was launched in association with ITDP that is Institute for Transportation and Development Policy. The objective of this initiative is to improve public transport. Next question is which e-commerce company is set to acquire ClearTrip? So it will be done by Flipkart. Flipkart is going to acquire ClearTrip. It is a travel and technology company. So it offer personalized travel products and it was founded in 2006. Flipkart is going to acquire 100% stakes of ClearTrip. Answer in comment box, which is the parent company of Flipkart? Next question is which organization hosted the BRICS seminar on the misuse of internet by terrorist? So BRICS stands for five countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. And this seminar was organized by NIA. It is National Investigation Agency. So NIA was constituted after 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. So this seminar was related to misuse of internet for terrorist purpose and role of digital forensic in terrorist investigations. So the seminar highlighted the issues related to technology and its misuse by the terrorist and how different investigation agencies should cooperate for proper investigation. This is very, very important for national security. Now, in the context of national security, recently one more case was in news. It was the case of ISRO scientist Nambi Narayanan. Recently, he was also in news because trailer of a movie based on him was released. So now the investigation of this case will be done by CBI. CBI is Central Bureau of Investigation. Recently, CBI Director Mr. Ranjit Sinha passed away. He was the former director of CBI. So now the investigation will be done by CBI. Previously, this investigation was managed by high level committee. Now Supreme Court has delegated this investigation to CBI. This is also known as ISRO spy case. Next question is USA has decided to withdraw all American troops from which country by September 11. September 11 is 9-11. This is important because on this day in 2001, Taliban organized an attack on the Twin Towers of USA. Osama bin Laden was a key conspirator in this entire issue. So now USA has decided to withdraw all the American troops from Afghanistan by 9-11. This is going to be the 20th anniversary 
of that terrorist attack that means 2021 is going to be the 20th anniversary because the attack was organized in 2001 taliban is a militant group in afghanistan now recently usa was also in news because it decided to join paris climate deal it was also in news as it decided to join who that is world health organization in fact the headquarters of united nation is also in new york in usa recently united nations was in news as it is going to conduct first ever international food systems summit and this will be organized in september 2021 next question is union agriculture ministry has signed agreement with which organization for a pilot project in 100 villages of six states so agriculture ministry has signed agreement with microsoft for a pilot project pilot means for trial basis so pilot project in 100 villages of six states these six states are uttar pradesh madhya pradesh gujarat haryana rajasthan and andhra pradesh so as a part of this project microsoft will develop the farmer interface for smart and well managed agriculture so the idea is to integrate technology with agriculture next question is which ministry organized hydrogen economy the indian dialogue 2021 so so ministry of petroleum and natural gas was a key actor for this dialogue under ministry of petroleum and natural gas the energy forum and fipi that is federation of indian petroleum industry organized this hydrogen economy the indian dialogue now in the context of hydrogen few other events were in news first is i h2a alliance so it stands for india hydrogen alliance apart from that recently longi green energy technology company was in news it is the biggest or it is the world's biggest solar energy company so why it was in news because it decided to enter into the hydrogen market recently apart from that japan and australia in a venture project produced liquefied hydrogen from coal Which state is set to form a committee to prepare the register of indigenous inhabitants of the state? So this is similar to the NRC, that is National Register of Citizens, and this decision has been taken by Nagaland. That means Nagaland government has decided to form a joint consultative committee. This joint consultative committee has been set up by Nagaland to prepare the register of indigenous inhabitants. That means the original inhabitants. of that particular state actually this decision to prepare this register of indigenous inhabitants was taken in 2019 now it was in news because government has decided to form a joint consultative committee for that process recently nagaland was also in news because of nscn as indian government that is government of india has extended ceasefire agreement with three insurgent groups of ns cn what is nscn it is national socialist council of nagaland so three insurgent groups are nscn nk r and k with these three groups government of india has extended ceasefire agreement nscn is a separatist group the main goal of nscn is to establish a sovereign naga state next question is refusal to work in essential services is prohibited under the act so this act is ESMA that is essential services maintenance act so this act was enacted in 1968 the act provide a list of essential services why this entire issue was in news because recently chatisgarh government invoked this ESMA so now this ESMA was invoked by chatisgarh government therefore in certain sectors that means in certain essential services workers cannot deny to work in simplest term they cannot just say that we do not want to work today so we are taking a leave so what are the common examples of these essential services for example health workers or sanitation workers it means these services are very very essential for normal life and therefore the people who are working or people who are providing services in these sectors cannot refuse from work so this act was enacted to maintain delivery of essential services during a strike or band now one question for students who are going to appear in epf4 examination which act provides the guidelines for strike and now that has become a part of one of the four labor code so the question is originally which act specified the guidelines for strikes 
Next question is which institution launched an expert panel called IP Guru? So first thing first, what is IP? IP stands for Internet Protocol. So this has been done by Nixie. Nixie stands for National Internet Exchange of India. So Nixie has announced some new initiatives to spread awareness about IPv6 protocol. So two most common protocol are IPv4 and IPv6. IPv6 is advanced version. So now Nixie, that is National Internet Exchange of India, has announced this IP Guru initiative to support transition from IPv4 to IPv6. Nixie is also creating an education platform for IPv6 and the name of this platform is Nixie Academy. So what exactly is Internet Protocol? In simplest term, just like our vehicles have number plate, similarly, on Internet, this is the number plate of your device. That means with the help of this Internet Protocol, particular device on Internet can be identified. So a specific number is assigned to each device which is connected to a computer network. One common question that can be asked in NCM is IPv4 is 32-bit binary number and IPv6 is 128-bit binary number. Next question is which country annexed the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine? So this country is Russia. This is the Crimean Peninsula. This is Russia and this is the Ukraine. So you can see this is the Crimean Peninsula. The white area is of Ukraine and this colored area is of Russia. Ukraine is surrounded by countries like Romania, Poland and Belarus. The capital of Ukraine is Kyiv. So why this issue was in news? See, Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Recently, this entire area was in news because Russia announced that it will close the waters leading to this Kerch Strait. So this strait connects Sea of Azov to Black Sea. Now recently, Russia was also in news because of Sputnik vaccine. Recently, India granted approval. In fact, India granted emergency use authorization to this Sputnik vaccine. So this is going to be the third vaccine in our country. First two are Covaxin and Covshield. So this is a vaccine of COVID. Now recently, a term related to COVID was in news and it is MK4482. So this is an antiviral drug and this is said to have decreased the levels of virus in the lungs. So this drug or this medicine could mitigate the high risk exposure to coronavirus. The capital of Russia is Moscow. Recently Moscow was also in news because of Moscow Film Festival and in this film festival Marathi film Uglia won the best foreign feature film award. So this is a Marathi film, name is Puglia. It won the best foreign feature film award at Moscow Film Festival. Moscow is the capital of Russia. Recently, Russia was in news because India granted emergency use approval for its Sputnik vaccine. Now in the context of film festival, recently one more film festival was in news and it is Venice Film Festival. And in this film festival, Italian director come actor Roberto Benigni has been conferred the Golden Lion Award. Roberto Benigni is from Italy and he has been awarded for the movie The Life is Beautiful. Now recently Italy was also in news as it launched first ever mega food park and food processing unit in our country and it is going to be in Gujarat. To be specific it is going to be in Mahsana district of Gujarat. Now coming back to Russia Recently, Russia was also in news because of S-400 missile defense system. So why Russia was in news because of S-400 missile defense system? Because India is purchasing these missile defense system from Russia. And recently, Russian government has agreed to deliver the first set of S-400 SA-21 Growler air defense system to India. Now please note that recently Turkey also purchased these missile defense system from Russia and because of this, USA imposed sanctions on Turkey as a part of Katsa. What is Katsa? It is countering American adversaries through Sanctions Act. So USA used this act to impose sanctions on America's adversary. Recently, Turkey was also in news as it banned the use of cryptocurrency. Next question is the ban in bronzes were found in which country? So these are the group of metal plaque and sculptures located in the royal palace of kingdom of Benin and 
This Benin city is situated in the modern day of Nigeria. Nigeria is an African country. So you can see this is Africa and this is the geographical location of Nigeria. This is Atlantic Ocean, Southern Atlantic and Northern Atlantic. This is Pacific Ocean, this is Indian Ocean and this is our country. So these metal sculptures were in use because recently UK, that is United Kingdom, accepted that the objects which British soldiers plundered in 1897 will be supplied to their current European custodians. In simplest term, Britishers took these sculptures from their original location. It is a similar story like Kohinoor. Now recently UK was also in news because of Nero Modi. So recently Home Secretary of UK has ratified the extradition of diamond merchant Nero Modi to India. Now answer in comment box, which ministry of our government is the nodal authority for the extradition process? Please note that Nero Modi is the key accused, is the key accused in the PNB bank fraud. In this context, a term was also in news. It is LOU. Answer in comment box. What is the full form of LOU? Next question is INS Nirakshak, which was in news recently, is classified under which type of vessel? So it is a diving support vehicle. Recently, it was in news because it was deployed by Indian Navy. Why it was deployed? Because some fishermen went missing of the Mangalore coast. So that is why in purse. So that is why to search them. INS Nirikshak was deployed by Indian Navy and this is a specialized diving support vehicle. Next question is which country has delivered the first lot of light bulletproof vehicles to the Indian Air Force in collaboration with Lockheed Marty. So this has been done by Asok Leyland. The parent company of Asok Leyland is Hinduja Farm. So it has delivered the first lot of LBPV that is light bulletproof vehicle. These vehicles has been designed and developed in collaboration with Lockheed Martin. So this is a company of USA and it is aerospace and defense technology company. Now please note that Asok Leyland has developed these light bulletproof vehicles in collaboration with Lockheed Martin and this is being done under transfer of technology initiative. So these are indigenously developed in and these vehicles are for Indian Air Force. Now, in the context of defense, few other events were in use. First is Khanjal. So, it is a military exercise and it is a military exercise between India and Kyrgyzstan. Recently, the 8th edition of this exercise was organized in Biskek. Second event related to defense was Balikhtan. So, this is a military exercise between Philippines and USA. Apart from that, recently, Indian Air Force Commanders Conference was organized. And the theme of this event was reorienting for the future. So along with one question, we have covered all the related news events. Next question is climate vulnerability assessment for adaptation planning in India report is set to be released by which department? So this is to be released by DST that is Department of Science and Technology. It is under Ministry of Science and Technology. Under this ministry, there are two departments. One is DBT, that is Department of Biotechnology. Another is DST, that is Department of Science and Technology. Name of report is Climate Vulnerability Assessment for Adaptation Planning in India. Now, apart from this particular report, few other reports and index were in use. First is Inclusive Internet Index. So, this was recently released by EIU, that is Economist Intelligence Unit. Its headquarter is in London. Along with AIU, Facebook was the key partner. So these two released this inclusive internet index. As per this index, India is on 49th position. Thailand was also on 49th position. Now as per the report, the numbers of internet users in India is set to reach 1 billion by 2025. Apart from that, Sweden is on top position as per this inclusive internet index. Last time, India was on 52nd position. This time, we are on 49th position. So apart from this index, few other reports were in news. One is, my body is my own. So this report has been released by UNFPA. What is UNFPA? It is United Nations Population Fund. So this report highlights that to what extent gender gap is there in our social life, and as per this report, only 55% women are fully empowered 
to make their own choices. Now, in the context of gender gap and gender related issues, recently, Ministry of Rural Development launched Gender Samvad event. Samvad stands for dialogue. So, this is a joint initiative of Deendayal Antyodhya Yojana, National Rural Livelihood Mission, along with IWWAGE. What is IWWAGE? It is Initiative for What Works to Advance Women and Girls in Economy. Apart from that, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare recently released a Rural Health Statistics Report. As per this report, there is overall shortfall of 76.1 percentage specialist doctors. This is the shortage of specialist doctors at CHC in rural areas. What is CHC? It is Community Health Center. Now, in the context of health, recently one more event was in news. It is Global Diabetes Compact. So, this is an initiative by WHO, that is World Health Organization, to fight the disease more effectively. Now, this initiative was launched during the 100 years celebration of discovery of insulin. Next question is, which regulator has announced the names of applicants under on-tap licensing window for universal banks? So, this has been announced by RBI, that is Reserve Bank of India. Now, please note that for universal banks, license can be obtained by individuals and professionals having 10 years of experience in banking and finance sector. For small finance bank, the minimum net worth requirement is 200 crore rupees. RBI is Reserve Bank of India. It is our central bank and it was set up on the recommendation of Hilton Young Commission. However, the concept of RBI was formulated on the basis of book by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and the title of this book was The Problem of Rupee. Recently, Dr. Ambedkar was in news because 14th of April was his birth anniversary and on this occasion, Prime Minister launched four books. These are Dr. Ambedkar, Jeevan Darshan, Dr. Ambedkar, Vakti Darshan, Dr. Ambedkar, Rashtra Darshan and fourth one is Dr. Ambedkar, I am Darshan. Dr. Ambedkar was the first law minister of independent India. These four books are written by Kishore Makwana. Apart from that, one more book was in news and it is the autobiography of cricketer Suresh Raina. And the title is Believe What Life and Cricket Taught Me. So, this is the autobiography of cricketer Suresh Raina and it has been co-authored by Bharat Sundreshan. Now, coming back to RBI. So, recently RBI was in news because RBI decided to open RTGS and NEFT facility for the payment system operators. RBI was also in news as it decided to set up new RRA. What is RRA? It is Regulations Review Authority. So, as the name suggests, this has been set up to review the regulations so that the compliance process can be made simpler and to reduce the reporting burden on the regulated entities. The first such RRA was set up for a period of one year in 1999. To be specific, it was on 1st April 1999. Now, RRB has decided to set up new RRA. So, it is going to be RRA 2.0. It has been set up for period of one year and it is to be headed by Deputy Governor M. Rajeshwar Rao. And it has been set up for a period of one year from 1st of May 2021. So, these were the most important questions. Now, for test, please check the separate video. Try to attempt the test without pausing that video. The timer is provided so that you can feel the pressure of exam-like scenario. Now, doubts from yesterday's comment section. So, first doubt is of Devesh Gupta. Whether the current affairs provided by GK Today is enough for SSC CGL Tier 1 or we have to study it from other sources. See, when you are preparing for competitive examination, you need to understand one concept that is cost to benefit ratio or you can call it input to output ratio. How much input you are providing and how much output you are going to get it from that input. In CZL tier 1 examination, current affairs do not have much weightage. So, you need to plan accordingly. If you are giving too much time to current affairs, please note that I am talking about CZL examination where the weightage of this current section is very limited. In other examination, obviously you will have to give more time if the weightage is higher. So, so in this case, you just need to follow one trustworthy shows. See, no shows 
even if you are following 10 choices or 20 choices can assure you 100% marks. Your goal should be to score maximum marks in limited amount of time. So one choice is more than enough and if you follow GK Today religiously, that means if you follow these videos re religiously and if you revise them on regular basis, this is more than enough. Next is what type of current affairs are most what type of current affairs are more important for civil services examination and for state pieces? We have started a new series of MCQ. Right now the questions are provided in text format only and this is available on GK Today Academy app. You can check the link of that app from the description box. Soon we are going to start the video series for the same. So this is in our pipeline. Till then you can practice MCQ from that app. Next question is of Nasir. How to overcome the dilemma? Of choosing correct options while solving question paper and how to ensure consistency so two important points first you have studied properly now when you are solving test you are not able to find the correct answer now this is common issue in case of UPSC examinations and in case of certain state PCS examination because their options are quite tricky so suppose four options are given now instead of selecting the correct option or instead of trying to select the correct option try to eliminate the incorrect one this will help you in improving your accuracy so suppose in this present case b is the correct answer but you are not sure about it so first check whether a can be answered or not if you find one reason that it cannot be the answer of this particular question then try to eliminate a similarly you can try to eliminate remaining options also so instead of going for the selection of correct answer try to eliminate the incorrect one Second is how to maintain consistency. This is the most common doubt and most common problem which is faced by the aspirants. First and foremost, you need to set up three things. Your sleep time, sleep on a fixed time, wake up on a fixed time. And once you wake up within 30 minutes, you should start studying. So first rule is sleep on fixed time, wake up on fixed time and start studying on fixed time. These three rules will help you or will help your body see the only rule of consistency is that you need to be self-disciplined motivation will not help you in longer run so please do not give too much importance to motivation instead of that focus on discipline next doubt is by Jagdish Kumar he is an employed person and the doubt is if I sit for study anyone is sure small distraction cause a loss of use time and stress to mind so how to stay focused how to stay calm while studying okay first and foremost put two things in flight mode first is your phone and second is yourself when you are studying even if you are studying through mobile phone try to disconnect it from internet if you are watching videos then try to download them first second thing is put yourself in flight mode what does that mean that means lock yourself if you are in room suppose you are living with your family tell them that I am studying and no one should disturb me for this much time. Another thing that you can follow is Pomodoro method. Try to study in small time periods. For example, you can have a study session of say 25 minutes. Try to repeat the same again and again. Once you are once you are comfortable with 25 minutes, then sit for 30 minutes, then 35 minutes and so on. The problem is that in today's era, mobile is the biggest distraction. Mobile is the biggest distraction. So you need to work on it. If possible, you can use that black and white mobile phone instead of multimedia mobile phone. Purchase a black and white mobile phone and when you are studying or when you are working, just use this phone. Again, in certain cases, it won't be possible to use black and white phone because nowadays most of the work is also assigned through multimedia phones. Next doubt is, I try to watch GK Today videos and note down regularly but I fail sometimes and from there it discontinues. Another thing is that I cannot remember the current affairs which are related to sports. So first, for your first problem, there are two solutions. One is you can take screenshots and you can revise them later. Second is you can make digital notes in Evernote or in OneNote or in Notion or there are multiple platforms. You can use any one of them. For certain aspects like if you cannot remember sports related current affairs, then do one thing. Suppose this is the page of your notebook. So just enter sports. Then here you can write cricket, hockey, football and so on. Now, if there is an event related to cricket, suppose recently ICC ODI ranking was released and as per that ranking, Babar Azam 
is on top position then recently first female cricket commentator passed away write down her name then then recently virat kohli the indian skipper was appointed as the brand ambassador by which brand so just try to write it in your own words and you will see a big change similarly you can do for hockey or for all the sports next doubt is related to history subject that how we can remember dates so for history you can follow one simple method now instead of focusing too much on dates try to remember history like a story for example 1905 bengal partition then 1907 surat split the parliament reforms then first world war then non cooperation movement and then you can connect it with say montesquieu champs ford reforms then simon commission nehru report then we have cdm that is civil disobedience movement so this is how you can make a chain of events and try to revise it multiple times and you are good to go which country has drafted ecocide bill to punish the act of environmental damage so this is being done by the france it has approved the creation of ecocide of france this word is similar to suicide so if you are doing something that is detrimental for environment that can be termed or that can be considered as a offense so this will be applicable to the most serious cases of environmental damage at national level such as pollution of a river now apart from france recently few other climate change related initiatives were in use first is related to european union so european union has announced that it is going to be the climate neutral continent by 2050 apart from that new zealand also committed to be carbon neutral by 2050 recently new zealand was also in news as it approved a new climate change law for the financial firm and therefore new zealand became the first country in the world to do so that means now the financial firms need to explain how they are going to manage the climate related risk and opportunities in addition to that recently israel was in news as it announced a national plan to reduce 80% of the ghg emission that is greenhouse gases emission by 2050 the plan aims to shut down all the coal powered power plants by 2050 by 2025 next question is which is the first known species to be capable of both increasing and decreasing its brain size so this is indian jumping ant this species can shrink its brain by nearly 20 percentages to prepare its body for the reproduction so this is the first species that is capable of both increasing and decreasing its brain size it is first such known insect to have such capabilities even honey bee can increase their brain size next question is which institution developed the world's first affordable and long lasting hygiene product named jirokia series so this has been done by iit hyderabad recently education minister ramesh pokhrel nishank virtually launched this world's first affordable and long lasting hygiene product and this is named as durokia series so these products will be helpful in combating covid-19 virus spread now education minister ramesh pokhrel nishank was also in news as he launched sarthak sarthak stands for students and teachers holistic advancement through quality education apart from that the union education minister was also in news as he launched nano sniffer this is world's first micro sensor based explosive detector and it has been developed by nano sniff technologies answer in comment box this nano sniff technologies is a startup incubated by which iit next question is river dhamra on which ropex jetty project is to be constructed is located in which state of india so it is situated in the state of odisha name of river is river dhamra now what is this ropex project ropex stands for roll on roll off passenger so it is a vessel built for the freight and passengers so recently shipping minister mansukh mandavia announced that 11 crore that 110 crore rupees ropex jetty project is going to be on river dhamra in odisha apart from that the additional infrastructure will also be developed as a part of sagarmala initiative now first thing first what is sagarmala initiative so it is a port led development scheme in simplest terms 
The objective is to transform the existing ports into modern world-class infrastructure. Now, if we talk about Dhamra River, it is in Odisha. And it is formed by the confluence of two rivers. One is Brahmani and Baitarni. So this river empties in Bay of Bengal. Next question is, which ministry hosted the 40th scientific expedition to Antarctica? So this is done by MOES, that is Ministry of Earth Sciences. It hosted the 40th scientific expedition to Antarctica. The expedition successfully returned to the Cape Town and the team was on board chartered ice class vessel MV Vasily Golovnin. So this concludes the four successful decades of India's scientific endeavor in Antarctica. That means four decades. Now recently this Antarctica was also in news because of Doomsday Glacier. Answer in comment box what is the other name of this glacier. This glacier is present in Antarctica and recently it was in use because of melting. Next question is Kamath Committee's proposal of 26 high stress sectors is associated with which government scheme. So Kamath Committee identified 26 sectors to be included in the ECLGS scheme. What is ECLGS? It is Emergency Credit Line Guarantee Scheme. Recently this was in use because Finance Ministry expanded the scope of this scheme to cover borrowers from healthcare sector. So now SMA 1 borrowers in the healthcare sector are covered in this ECLGS and that is Emergency Credit Line Guarantee Scheme. Now first thing first what is this ECLGS? So it provides 100% guarantee coverage by National Credit Guarantee Trustee Company to the member lending institutions for the loans to the eligible MSME. What is this entire issue? See, suppose you are an MSME entity, you need loan, but the lending institutions are not sure whether you are going to return the money or not. So in such cases, that means in order to provide more loan facilities, the National Credit Guarantee Trustee Company comes into picture. So it provides a guarantee for your loan and this guarantee is provided as a part of this ECLGS scheme. So now even health sector is included as a part of the scheme. The scheme aims to provide relief to the stressed companies in the country. So it includes various sectors such as tourism, health is now included. It also includes hospitality, travel. Now we also discussed this SMA. What is SMA? It is special mention accounts. So these are the accounts which show the sign of incipient stress. Now there are three different type of SMA. SMA 0, SMA 1 and SMA 2. SMA 0 accounts are those accounts where payments are partially or completely overdue for 1 to 30 days. So payment is overdue for up to 1 to 30 days. If payment is overdue for 31 to 60 days then such will be part of SMA 1 accounts and if payment is due for more than 60 days to 90 day then these are the parts of SMA 2. Next question is Luna 25 is the name of lunar mission of which country? So it is the lunar mission of Russia. Luna means moon. Now in the context of moon recently few other initiatives were in news. Recently UAE announced that it is going to launch its first unmanned rover to the moon by next year and the name of rover is Rashid. It will be transported by lunar exploration firm iSpace. Apart from that, Lupex mission was in news and it is a joint lunar probe exploration mission and for this mission, India and Japan are collaborating. In addition to that, recently China and Russia signed planetary pact for joint lunar space station. Apart from that, recently NASA's Artemis mission was also in news as a part of this mission, NASA is going to land first woman and person of color on moon by 2024. NASA is the space agency of USA. NASA stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Recently, NASA was also in news as US President Joe Biden nominated Bill Nelson to serve as the next administrator of NASA. Next question is complex past. Diverse Futures is the theme of which special day that was celebrated on 18th of April. So it was the theme of 
World Heritage Day. It is celebrated on 18th of April. It is also known as International Day for Monuments and Sites. Theme was Complex Past, Diverse Futures. On this occasion, Tourism and Culture Minister inaugurated first ever online exhibition on Ramayana. And this exhibition showed the miniature paintings collection of National Museum of Delhi. Now, apart from World Heritage Day, recently Liver Day was celebrated on 19th of April. Hemophilia Day was observed on 17th of April. And the theme of this day was Adapting to Change, Sustaining Care in a New World. On the other hand, on 16th of April, World Voice Day was observed. And the theme was One World, Many Voices. Next question is Table Mountain National Park, which was in news recently, is located in which country? So, it is located in South Africa. It was in use because of the forest fire. Apart from that, the Mostert's Mill was also in use because of the same forest fire. So, this is the geographical location of this Table Mountain National Park. This is the African continent. This is South Atlantic Ocean. This is Madagascar, Indian Ocean. And this is our country. This is Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal. And this one is Gulf of Aden. This is Red Sea and this was Swiss Canal and this is Swiss Canal which was in use recently. This is Persian Gulf. Tehri Lake on whose bank an adventure sports institute has been opened is in which state of India? So this is in the state of Uttarakhand. Present Chief Minister of Uttarakhand is Tirat Singh Rawat. Recently the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand and Union Sports Minister Kiran Rizuzu inaugurated a water sports and adventure institute on the bank of this Tehri lake. This lake is in Uttarakhand and this institute will be run by ITBP. What is ITBP? It is Indo-Tibbatian Border Police. So ITBP is Indo-Tibbatian Border Police. It is under MHA that is Ministry of Home Affairs. Actually it is a part of CAPF that is Central Armed Police Force. Now recently Uttarakhand was also in news as dust lick exercise was conducted in Uttarakhand. It is a joint exercise between India and Uzbekistan. Apart from this, recently one more exercise was in news and it is Vajra Prahar. So, it is an exercise between India and USA and this was organized in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Next question is Israel has signed its biggest ever defense procurement deal with which country? So, this country is Greece. So, recently Israel and Greece has signed the biggest ever defense procurement deal. This includes contract worth 1.6 billion US dollars. Apart from that, there will be a training center and it is Hellenic Air Force training center. It is going to be in Greece. Now, if we talk about geographical location of these two countries, this is Israel and this is Greece. This is Mediterranean Sea. This is Gibraltar Strait and this is Atlantic Ocean. This continent is Africa. These countries are Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya and Egypt. Recently, this area was in use because of Swiss Canal. Now recently, Libya was also in use because UNSC, that is United Nations Security Council, promoted a ceasefire in Libya. Actually, Libya is under political crisis after the removal of its dictator Gaddafi in 2011. Now Greece was also in use because of Stanford's Tsitsipas. So, who is Stanfos Tsitsipas? So, he is from Greece and recently he won the Monte Carlo Open Tournament. And he is the youngest player ranked in the top 10 by ATP. What is ATP? It is Association of Tennis Professionals. Next question is, what is the name of condition in which the human body is deprived of adequate oxygen supply at tissue level? So, it is the condition of hypoxia. There are two terms. In fact, two prefix. One is hypo, one is hyper. Hypo is used when it is low. Hyper is used when it is high. So, hypoxia is a condition when human body is deprived of adequate oxygen supply at the tissue level. So, recently this term was in use because of COVID-19 as a lot of COVID-19 patients are facing the condition of hypoxia due to virus. That means they are facing the problem of shortage of oxygen and that is why Oxygen cylinders are in demand. Recently, DRDO, that is Defense Research and Development Organization, has developed SPO2 
supplemental oxygen delivery system. So this protects the person from sinking into or from going into the state of hypoxia. Now what is SpO2? It is blood oxygen saturation or oxygen saturation. In simplest term, it is a measure of amount of oxygen carrying hemoglobin in the blood relative to amount of hemoglobin not carrying oxygen. See, in simplest term, hemoglobin carry oxygen. Now in blood, some hemoglobin carries oxygen, some do not. So this SpO2 is known as oxygen saturation and it is a measure of amount of oxygen carrying hemoglobin in the blood as compared to amount of hemoglobin not carrying the oxygen. So if this level is low, obviously there is a problem of oxygen supply in the body. And because of COVID-19, a lot of patients are facing this problem. Now in the context of COVID recently, India approved Sputnik vaccine. It is a vaccine by Russia. Recently, Russia was also in news because of Dr. Vera Kedroitz. So she is regarded as the first female military surgeon and she was in news recently as Google celebrated her 151st birth anniversary. She was a Russian surgeon. Now Russia was also in news as the agreement between Roscosmos. Roscosmos is the space agency of Russia. So agreement between Roscosmos and other space agencies for ISS that is International Space Station is going to end in 2024. ISS is International Space Station. So now Russia is going to launch its own space station by 2025. For ISS, five space agencies are the key collaborator. USA, that is NASA of USA, Roscosmos of Russia, CSA of Canada, ESA of European Union and JAXA of Japan. Now in the context of oxygen, recently one more term was in use. It is PSA. What is PSA? It is pressure swing adsorption. So recently health ministry approved 162 PSA oxygen plants for the installation in the public health facilities in all the states. So this will help in tackling the problem of scarcity of oxygen in the hospitals. Now in the context of this COVID scenario, recently central government has allowed states to use up to 50% of SDRF. What is SDRF? It is State Disaster Response Fund. So up to 50% of SDRF for the financial year of 2021 to 2022 can be used to fight the COVID-19. SDRF is State Disaster Response Fund. So up to 50% can be used to tackle the Corona situation. SDRF has been constituted as per the provisions of Disaster Management Act of 2005. Next question is India signed a memorandum of understanding with which country on cities combating plastic entering the marine environment. So recently MOHUA that is Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has signed agreement with Germany for cooperation in the context of cities combating plastic entry is the marine environment. So this is in lines with our Swachh Bharat initiative. See, we have Swachh Bharat Abhiyan or Swachh Bharat Mission or Clean India campaign. This campaign was initiated by the government in 2014 and it has two key major objectives. One is to eliminate open defecation and second is solid waste management. This campaign was launched in 2014 and, and this campaign was launched on 2nd of October. So it has two components. One is urban component. This is implemented by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Rural component is implemented by Jal Shakti Ministry. Actually previously it used to be implemented by Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation. But now this ministry is merged with this Jal Shakti Ministry. Next question is which authority recently ruled that flavored milk is a beverage containing milk and it will attract GST at a rate of 12 percent. So this has been done by Gujarat double A R that is Gujarat authority for advanced ruling. What is this entire controversy? So this authority has ruled that flavored milk is a beverage containing milk and therefore it will attract 12 percent of GST. GST is goods and service tax. So there was controversy about the taxability under GST for this specific product and that is why Gujarat authority for advanced ruling has cleared it. Now GST is goods and service tax. It is indirect tax. Please note that certain items are outside the purview of GST. These items are alcohol. That is why you might have seen 
the controversy that why even during the pandemic situation alcohol shops were opened or liquor shops were opened because these are the major source of revenue for state governments they are not part of gst as of now apart from that petroleum products are not under the purview of gst and electricity is also exempted as of now for gst we have gst council and this council is headed by finance minister now answer in comment box in gst council all the union territories are represented or not next question is iaea that is international atomic energy agency has confirmed that which country started enriching uranium up to 60% so this country is iran actually in the context of nuclear there was a agreement jcpoa that is joint comprehensive plan of action it is known as iran nuclear deal now when mr donald trump was the president of usa he decided to quit this agreement and he decided to impose sanctions on iran this deal was signed to prevent iran from making nuclear weapons now when sanctions were reimposed on iran it said that we are going to make nuclear weapons again it is a pressure tactics so that countries remove sanctions from iran and that is why iran started this enrichment of uranium and this was done at its natanj nuclear facility so in examination they may ask you that natanj nuclear facility is related to which country so it is related to iran recently iaea has confirmed that iran is enriching uranium up to 60% this high level of enrichment is used for nuclear weapons now please note that the headquarters of iaea is in vienna in austria in fact the headquarters of opac is also in vienna in austria apart from that please answer in comment box whether iaea is an organization of united nations or not next question is with reference to defense what is inas 323 which was recently commissioned so it is indian navy's first unit of indigenously built advanced light helicopter mk3 and it is indian naval air squadron 323 that is inas 323 and it was recently commissioned at ins hansa in goa and it has been manufactured that means the engine has been manufactured by hl so the squadron will operate these alh mk3 helicopters and the engine for these are manufactured by hl that is hindustan aeronautics limited now recently indian navy was also in news because of ins because of ins suvarna so why ins suvarna was in news because it seized over 300 kg of narcotic substances and the approximate cost of this seizure in the international market is estimated as 3000 crore now coming back to hl it is hindustan aeronautics limited the headquarters is in bengaluru and it is under defense ministry actually it is a public sector enterprise and it is under defense ministry next question is seva subramanian raman has took over as the chairperson and md of which organization so he is the new chairperson of sidbi what is sidbi it is small industries development bank of india apart from him recently few other appointments were in news so recently siddharth singh longjam has been appointed as the new dg that is director general of nada that is national anti doping agency in addition to him recently poonam gupta became the first women director general of nca er what is nca er it is national council of applied economic research in addition to her recently one more woman was in news and she is priyanka mohite so why she was in news because she became the first indian woman to scale mount annapurna next question is which is the second largest part of body in human beings so it is liver recently world liver day was celebrated on 19th of april theme was keep your liver healthy and disease free so apart from this on 21st of april civil services day was celebrated civil servants are considered as a steel frame of india now answer in comment box which freedom fighter called civil servants as the steel frame of india apart from that 21st of april is also celebrated as world creativity and innovation day in addition to that 22nd of april was celebrated as world earth day nimbus is a flagship cloud service project of which country so it is a flagship cloud service project of israel cloud services means 
online storage facilities. So recently, Israel government selected AWS, that is Amazon Web Services and Google for 1 billion US dollars project to provide cloud services for the public sector and military sector of Israel. So these two were selected by the government of Israel for cloud services project. This is going to be four phase project. Next question is, what is the theme of Earth Day 2021? So the theme was restore our Earth. Every year, Earth Day is celebrated on 22nd of April. And this year, it is special because this year we celebrated 51st anniversary of this Earth Day. Please note that the United Nations has designated 22 the United Nations has designated 22nd of April as International Mother Earth Day. So 22nd of April was celebrated as Earth Day. On the other hand, 24th of April was observed as World Day for Laboratory Animals. Apart from that, 24th of April was also observed as National Panchayati Raj Day. Now in this context, few important points are first thing first. For panchayats, we have 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act. For urban cooperative bodies, we have 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. This 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act was enacted in 1992 and it became effective on 24th of April in 1993. That's why 24th of April is significant. Now, this 24th of April is also significant in the context of Keshwan and the Bharti case. This Keshwan and Bharti case is the case which laid the foundation of basic structure doctrine of our constitution. Now answer in comment box, which state of India is the first state in our country to have Panchayati Raj system? Apart from that, 24th of April was also celebrated as World Veterinary Day. In addition to that, 24th of April was also celebrated as International Day of Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace. On the other hand, so this was in the context of 24th of April. On the other hand, 23rd of April was celebrated as World Book and Copyright Day. And 21st of April was celebrated as World Creativity and Innovation Day. Next question is, COVID rap technology has been developed by which institute? So it has been developed by IIT Kharagpur. With the help of this technology, the COVID test results can be obtained within 45 minutes of sampling. And these results can be seen using a smartphone application. So recently, IIT Kharagpur was in use as it commercialized its COVID app diagnostic technology that detects various infectious diseases, including COVID-19. Now, in the context of COVID, 1st of May is important because government has announced that from 1st of May, people above 18 years of age will be vaccinated. And we have three vaccines so far. Covaxin, Covishield and Sputnik V. This vaccine is from Russia and recently it was given approval. Next question is, what is the name of NSE's index? NSE stands for National Stock Exchange. So what is the name of index of NSE which has completed 25 years recently? So index is Nifty 50. It is a flagship index of NSE. NSE is National Stock Exchange. Recently, this index was in use because it completed 25 years on 22nd of April. Originally, it was launched in 1996. So it is an index of top 50 companies. When this index was started, at that point of time, it showed top 50 countries. Now, after 25 years, only 13 of those companies are still in top 50. Please note that NSE is National Stock Exchange and it is the first dematerialized electronic exchange in our country. It was established in 1992. It is in Mumbai. We have one more stock exchange. It is BSC. That is Bombay Stock Exchange. It is Asia's oldest stock exchange. Next question is, what is the full form of term CPC pertaining to the violations of religious freedoms? So recently, this entire issue was in use because of USCIRF. What is USCIRF? It is US Commission on International Religious Freedom. Recently, this commission has recommended the US government to place India on the CPC list. That is, countries of particular concern for violation of religious freedom. As per this, there is not much religious freedom available in our country. And this also recommended the imposition of certain sanctions or restrictions on the Indian individuals and entities which are responsible for violating religious freedoms. Now, please note that this is recommended by US Commission on 
international religious freedom. USA was also in news because of no ban act. So USA was in news because of USCIRF and USA was also in news because of no ban act. What is this no ban act? This aims to limit the ability of US president to impose travel ban on the basis of religion. See, when Donald Trump was president, he had imposed travel restrictions on the Muslims. Now, this specific law prohibit the president of USA to impose travel ban on basis of religion. See, this is how power works. On one side, USA had imposed ban on the Muslims because of their religion. And on another side, a commission of USA is preaching others about religious freedom. Next question is with reference to recent NASA project, what does M in MOXIE stand for? So M stands for Mars. Recently, the Perseverance mission of NASA has extracted oxygen on the planet Mars using this MOXIE. What is MOXIE? It is Mars Oxygen in situ resource utilization experiment. Please remember its full form. In examination, they may ask you, so what is this entire issue? See, on the surface of Mars, CO2 is available. CO2 is carbon dioxide. So it makes up to 96% of the gas in the atmosphere of Mars. The oxygen on the surface of Mars is very limited. It is only 0.13%. Now this MOXIE convert CO2 on the surface of Mars into O2. That is from carbon dioxide to oxygen. Recently one more Mars mission was in use. It is HOPE probe. Answer in comment box. HOPE probe is a Mars mission by which country? Next question is, as per IEA report, by what percentage of CO2 emissions in India in 2021 will be higher than that of 2020? That means, how much more CO2 will be emitted by India in 2021 as compared to 2020? So recently, IEA, that is International Energy Agency, released a report. As per this report, India is going to emit 1.4% more CO2 as compared to previous year. The report also stated that the expected increase or expected rise in the coal-based electricity generation would be three times more than the generation from other sources. So electricity is generated from coal, from other sources such as water-based projects, that is hydropower. But as per this report, the expected rise in coal-based electricity generation would be three times more than the generation from other sources. Now, if we talk about IEA, that is International Energy Agency, it is Paris-based organization and it works in the framework of OECD, that is Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. It is known for its reports such as Global Energy Review and World Energy Outlook. So these two are released by International Energy Agency. OECD is Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. The headquarters of OECD is in Paris in France. Next question is, what is the name of program which is backed by WHO, that is World Health Organization, that aims to fund young people's idea to combat COVID-19 impact? So the name of this program is Global Youth Mobilization. So idea is to support. So the intention behind this initiative is to support the idea of young people to combat the impact of COVID-19 in various communities. So this initiative is supported by both WHO and United Nations Foundation. Various other international organizations have supported this initiative. Next question is, which state or union territory has recently formed an oxygen audit committee? So this has been done by Delhi. That is, government of Delhi has constituted a 24-member oxygen audit committee because of acute shortage of medical oxygen in hospitals across Delhi. So now this committee is going to monitor the oxygen stocks and their consumption. Now, in the context of shortage of oxygen recently, Oxygen Express was in news. So, country's first Oxygen Express departed from Andhra Pradesh to supply oxygen to Maharashtra. Apart from that, recently Haryana government launched COVID Emergency Loan Scheme. So, what is the objective of this COVID Emergency Loan Scheme? Objective is to provide loan facility to the entrepreneurs for supplying oxygen and medicines. So, this is a facility for entrepreneurs to provide emergency loan to them for supplying oxygen and medic medicines. Next question is which space agency has launched a mission named SHIELDS? So this has been done by NASA. NASA is the space agency of USA. NASA stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So the name of mission is SHIELDS. It stands for Special Heterodyne Interferometric 
emission line dynamics spectrometer here full form is not that much important you just need to remember that it is a mission of nasa and this is a mission to study the light from interstellar particles which are drifted in the solar system recently nasa was also in news because of its helicopter ingenuity nasa was also in news as recently us president joe biden nominated bill nelson to serve as the next administrator of nasa now please note that ingenuity is a helicopter of nasa and an indian origin nasa engineer is behind this helicopter and his name is bob balram codex elementarius which was in news recently is associated with which field so it is related to food standards and the consultations for these food standards are organized by who and fao recently it was in news because the fifth session of codex committee on spices and culinary hubs was organized virtually so few important points it is organized by fao in association with who fao is food and agriculture organization it is an organization of united nations headquarters is in rome in italy the director general of fao is q dongyu and it was established in 1945 now in our country for food safety and standards we have fssai that is food safety and standards authority of india and it is under ministry of health and family welfare who is world health organization next question is which country has been validated by who for having eliminated trachoma so recently gambia eliminated trachoma as a public health problem and with this now gambia became the second country in the african region of who to eliminate this disease which was the first country cote de ivory was the first country in the who african region to achieve this milestone now first thing first the trachoma is a eye disease and it is caused by a bacteria so it is a bacterial disease which impact eyes now coming back to the geographical location of gambia so this is gambia this continent is africa this is atlantic ocean this is south america this is pacific ocean and this is indian ocean this is our country now answer in comment box what is the name of this particular country so as you can see closer this is gambia it is a west african country this is cote de ivory this was the first country in the who african region to eliminate trachoma recently egypt was also in news because of suez canal this is mediterranean sea and here it is going to be strait of gibraltar which connect the atlantic ocean to the mediterranean sea now who was also in news because who is celebrating world immunization week and this is to be celebrated from 24th of april to 30th of april and the theme is vaccines bring us closer next question is kri nangala 402 is a submarine of which country so it is a submarine of indonesia so recently the submarine was in news because it lost and in a response to that indian navy also launched a rescue operation however as per latest media reports the news is that this submarine got sank so it is a bad news so it is a sad news the submarine sank with 53 crew members this was confirmed by indonesian navy next question is net zero banking alliance is convened by which organization so this is related to unep that is united nation environment program various countries to be specific various banks from different countries formed this net zero banking alliance and this nzba that is net zero banking alliance joined gfa and z what is gfa and z it is glasgow financial alliance for net zero now please note that this time cop 26 that is conference of parties number 26 is going to be in glasgow this is in uk cop 25 held in spain under the presidency of chile government uk was also in news because of d10 grouping d10 is a group of 10 democracies which was proposed by uk uk was also in news as it decided to join cptpp next question is india launched a climate and clean energy agenda 2030 partnership with which country so this country is usa recently during a virtual summit us president joe biden and indian prime minister mr modi announced that india and usa are going to launch agenda 2030 for partnership on climate related issues and for partnership on clean energy related issues 
USA was also in news as it decided to join Paris Climate Agreement. It was also in news as it decided to join WHO, that is World Health Organization. Next question is, who has been selected as the external auditor to the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons? So our current CAG. CAG is Controller and Auditor General. So current CAG, Mr. G.C. Murmu has been selected as the external auditor of OPCW, that is Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. His tenure is going to be for three years. What is the objective of OPCW? Objective is to prohibit chemical weapons. And it is an intergovernmental organization and the implementing authority for Chemical Weapon Convention. The headquarters of OPCW is in The Hague in Netherlands. Now, CAG stands for Controller and Auditor General. It is a constitutional authority as per the provisions of Article 148. Present CAG is Mr. G. C. Mormo. Apart from being selected as the external auditor of OPCW, recently he was reappointed as the chairman of panel of external auditors of United Nations for the year 2021. Present Secretary General of United Nations is Antonio Guterres. He is a diplomat from Portugal. Capital of Portugal is Lisbon. Answer in comment box whether Portugal share its border boundary with Mediterranean Sea or not. Next question is, the Indian government is set to provide free food grains to the poor under which scheme? So, food stands for un. So, this is the keyword. So, under the provisions of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Un Yojana, the government is going to provide free food grains to the poor in the month of May and June in the context of this COVID lockdown. So, additional food grains will be provided to the poor. Now, this food is going to be additional than the provisions of NFSA. What is NFSA? It is National Food Security Act. So this act was enacted in 2013. As per this act, food grains are provided. Now, additional free of cost food grains will be distributed to the NFSA beneficiaries under this Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anniyojana. And this is to be done for the months of May and June. Name of scheme is Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anniyojana. So, as per the scheme, 5 kg per person per month is to be provided to nearly 80 crore beneficiaries and this will be provided free of cost. We are covering details of scheme because sometimes in exam, they may ask you the factual questions. Now, one more thing is that this NFSA is popularly known as Right to Food Act. And for this additional allocation under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anniyojana, the full expenditure of rupee 26,000 crores will be paid by central government or government of India. Next question is, when was the 2021 International Girls in ICT Day was observed by ITU? So, it was observed on 22nd of April and it was celebrated by ITU. What is ITU? It is International Telecommunication Union and usually the 4th Thursday of April is celebrated as International Girls in ICT Day. This time it was on 22nd of April. Now why it is significant? Because this year the 10th anniversary of this day was celebrated and the theme was Connected Girls Creating Brighter Futures. ITU is International Telecommunication Union. It is a specialized organization of United Nations. The headquarters is in Geneva and it is one of the oldest organization. It was established in 1865 and the parent organization of ITU is United Nations Economic and Social Council. Recently, this United Nations Economic and Social Council was in use as India has been elected as a member to three bodies of this United Nations Economic and Social Council. Answer in comment box, what is the name of these three organizations? Next question is, Japan is set to hold its first joint military drill or military exercise with which two countries against China's aggression. So, Japan is going to hold its first joint military exercise with USA and France and this will be organized to counter China's aggression. So, Japan was also in news because of Tokyo Olympic Games. Japan was also in news because of 2 plus 2 le level dialogue. So, with three countries, India have 2 plus 2 level dialogue. One is Japan, one is USA and third is Australia. These four countries, that is India, Japan, USA and Australia are the members of Quad. Quad is Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. It is also known as Asian NATO. 
what is nato it is north atlantic treaty organization answer in comment box where is the headquarters of nato recently australia was also in news because of victoria state so recently australian government or federal government of australia cancelled the agreement of victoria with china in the context of bri what is bri it is belt and road initiative apart from that japan was also in news because of yashokuni shrine so it is a shrine located in the capital of japan that is in tokyo and this was in news as it commemorates those who died in the service of japan during second world war recently or uh, it was in controversy because of the visit of prime minister of japan which country is the world's largest military spender in 2020 as per the recent report by cipri what is cipri it is stockholm international peace research institute so as per the reports usa is on top position in terms of military expenditure as per this recent report the name of report is trends in world military expenditure now this report has been released by cipri cipri is named after stockholm stockholm is the capital of sweden so this is the geographical location of sweden this is sweden this is norway this is baltic sea and this is finland this is north sea uk and this is black sea and this is the location of stockholm stockholm is the capital of sweden as per latest report usa is the largest spender on defense so top 3 countries in terms of military expenditure are usa china and india so us spent approximately 3.7 percentage of its gdp on military on the other hand china and india are the next two in terms of military expenditure now stockholm is also known for stockholm convention so it is a convention about pop that is persistent organic pollutant answer in comment box whether india is a party to this convention or not next question is which is the third most populous country in the world so usa is on third position in terms of population china is on top position india is on second position and usa is on third position as per the population data recently this was in news because the census bureau of usa released data in this context and as compared to previous census the population of us increased by 7.4 percentage and this is the second slowest growth of us population since great depression now on the basis of this population the seats in us congress are allocated similarly in our country on the basis of population seats are allocated and this process is being implemented by delimitation commission this delimitation commission is appointed by the president and it works in collaboration with election commission of india now please note that election commission of india is a constitutional body and it is constituted as per the provisions of article 324 next question is albert fahimi has been named as the interim prime minister of which country so he has been named as the interim prime minister of chad chad is an african country please note that recently the president of chad died while fighting with the rebels his name was idris debe now subsequently the military council in chad seized the power after the death of president and now they have selected this interim prime minister and albert fahimi is the interim prime minister of chad now coming back to the geographical location of chad so it is a country situated in the center of africa this is chad this is mediterranean sea this is atlantic ocean this is gulf of aden swaz canal persian gulf and this is strait of gibraltar next question is under which scheme Andaman and Nicobar Islands has been given the certificate as organic by the government of India so it has been done as a part of large area certification PGS now first thing first what is this PGS PGS stands for participatory guarantee system so recently agriculture ministry has certified Andaman and Nicobar Islands as organic under this large area certification scheme of PGS now this is a first of its kind when such a large area of a contiguous territory has been certified as organic by the agriculture ministry now this large area certification is a part of paramparagat krishi vikas yojana the scheme was launched in 2014 and the objective of this scheme is to promote natural farming now please note that sikkim was the first state in our country which was declared fully organic the species is a participatory guarantee scheme system and it is implemented by ministry of agriculture 
and these certifications are based on the regulations which are issued by FSSAI. FSSAI stands for Food Safety and Standards Authority of India and it is under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Now coming back to the geographical location of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So this is Bay of Bengal, this is Sri Lanka, this is Tamil Nadu and this is the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. This is Andaman Sea, Gulf of Thailand and this is Malacca Strait or Strait of Malacca. Answer in comment box, Strait of Malacca is between which two Asian countries? Okay, one side it is Malaysia. What is the name of country on this side? Next question is which institution is to conduct bank customers satisfaction survey on bank mergers? So this will be done by Reserve Bank of India. It is going to conduct bank customers satisfaction survey. The objective is to understand that to what extent bank mergers have helped the customers means whether customers are happy with this or not. Please note that RBI was constituted on the recommendation of Hilton Young Commission and the concept of RBI is based on a book by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. The name of this book was The Problem of the Rupee. Recently, RBI was also in news as it approved Atanu Chakrabarti as a part-time chairperson of HDFC Bank, SDFC Bank, SBI and ICICI. These three banks are domestic systemically important banks and this status is given by RBI. This status is given to those banks which are very very crucial for our economy. That means they are too big to fail and if they are going to fail it will have ramifications on the entire country. Next question is which sports personality is leading the UNICEF global vaccination initiative? So David Beckham the football player and the goodwill ambassador of UNICEF is playing a key role in the global vaccination initiative. Now please note that he has founded seven fund for UNICEF. That means the idea behind this initiative is to encourage parents to vaccinate themselves and to vaccinate their children to protect them against a disease such as diphtheria, polio. Now please note that World Immunization Week was observed and it is observed in the last week of April. The theme of this year's World Immunization Week was Vaccines Bring Us Closer. Next question is Lunglai Town which was hit by forest fire is situated in which state? So it is in the state of Mizoram. Recently this location was in use because of widespread forest fire. Now this is Mizoram. Four states share border boundary with Myanmar. These four states are Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram. Now please note that Mizoram is also a part of 6th schedule. So in 6th schedule there are 4 states A, T, M and in this ATM there is no money. That means there is no Manipur. So 1M is for Meghalaya and 1M is for Mizoram. T stands for Tripura and A stands for Assam. Next question is what is the name of community service center which is a web based interface for data related to India's first solar space mission. So name is Aditya L1 support cell. And it has been set up by ISRO. ISRO is Indian Space Research Organization. It is under DOS that is Department of Space. So for this ISRO has collaborated with ARIES. What is ARIES? It is Aryabhatta Research Institute of Observational Science. And this institute is in Uttarakhand. ISRO headquarters is in Bangalore in Karnataka. Now please note that Aditya L1 is India's first solar mission. And it is going to observe the lower region of solar corona. Which institution has released the state of economy report? So this has been released by RBI. What is RBI? It is Reserve Bank of India. So recently Reserve Bank of India released state of economy report. As per this report, if COVID infections are not brought under control, then it may have impact on the supply chain and therefore it may have impact on the inflation. What is inflation? It is price rise. That means price of commodities may increase if the COVID infections are not under control. Now please note that RBI through MPC that is Monetary Policy Committee monitors the inflation. Present target for MPC it is 4 plus minus 2 that is to keep the inflation within the range of 2% to 6 percentage. MPC is a six member committee out of which three are from RBI and three are appointed by the government of India and MPC is headed by RBI governor. Now answer in comment books which RBI 
governor is known as father of Indian banking sector reforms. Next question is, what is India's ranking Chandler Good Government Index? So India's ranking is 49. This Chandler Good Government Index is released by Chandler Institute and the headquarter of this institute is in Singapore. In our country, Good Governance Day is observed on 25th of December. Answer in comment box whose birth anniversary is celebrated as Good Governance Day in our country. Now please note that as per the Chandler Good Governance Index, Finland is on top position. India is on 49th position. In the context of Good Governance in India, a Good Governance Index is released and it is released by Ministry of Personal, Public Grievances and Pensions. Now coming to the geographical location of Finland. So this is Finland, this is Sweden, this is Norway, this is Baltic Sea, North Sea and this is Black Sea. Next question is Deepika Kumari and Atanu Das are associated with which sports? So these two are associated with archery. So recently Deepika Kumari and her husband Atanu Das have won gold medals in the recurve event of Archery World Cup. And this is the first gold medal for women's recurve event in the last seven years. That means this is the first gold medal for our country. Now this event was organized in Guatemala. It is a Central American country. This is the geographical location of Guatemala. This is Caribbean Sea. This side it is Atlantic Ocean. And this side it is Pacific Ocean. This is Gulf of California and this is Gulf of Mexico. This is Cuba. Capital of Cuba is Havana. Now recently Cuba was in use as the chief of communist party Raul Castro decided to resign. Next question is which organization developed crystal blade technology for aero engines. So this has been done by DRDO. What is DRDO? It is Defense Research and Development Organization. So in a first of its kind, DRDO has developed single crystal blade technology and this has been developed for HAL. What is HAL? It is Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So these will be used for the helicopters of HAL. Now please note that it is a defense PSU. It is under Ministry of Defense and the headquarters of HAL is in Bangalore. In fact, the first fighter aircraft which was made in India was by HAL and it was HAL HF-24 model. Next question is Project Dantak which was in use recently is a flagship initiative of BRO. The question is it was carried out in which country? So this is related to Bhutan. What is BRO? It is Border Road Organization. So this project Dantak was started in 1961. At that point of time our Prime Minister was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. So it is one of the oldest initiative of BRO. Objective of this initiative was to construct motorable road in Bhutan. So why this was in use recently? Actually this project was started on 24th of April in 1961. So recently it completed 50 years. That's why it was in use. BRO is Border Road Organization. It is under MOD that is Ministry of Defense. So BRO is under the administrative control of Ministry of Defense. Now if we talk about geographical location of Bhutan. So this is our neighbor Bhutan. This is our country. This is Nepal, Bangladesh, Myanmar, China. This is Yellow Sea, East China Sea and Sea of Japan. Please cover this map properly because in next test video questions will be framed from this particular map. Next question is global strategy on occupational safety and health is associated with which organization? So it is related to ILO. What is ILO? It is International Labour Organization. So the World Day for Safety and Health at Work was observed on 28th of April. It was World Day for Safety and Health at Work. Now this year on this day ILO decided to raise awareness on the importance of creating and investing resilient OSH. OSH stands for Occupational Safety and Health Systems. Please note that ILO is an organization of United Nations. Now for EPFO students there is one question. Out of eight core conventions of ILO which two conventions are not signed by India? Means there are total eight core conventions of ILO and we have signed only six. Two are not signed by India. What is the name of these two conventions? 
So ILO is an organization of United Nations. In fact, it is the first and oldest specialized agency of United Nations. It was founded in October 1990 and it was founded under League of Nations. Presently, the Director General of ILO is Guy Ryder. So it was founded in 1919. Presently, the Director General of ILO is Guy Ryder. Parent organization is United Nations. Next question is Indo-German project Pyrasol is associated with which field? So it is related to urban waste management. Now on regular basis, I see one comment that why answers are not ticked rightly. See, this is being done for your own benefit. Next time when you are going to revise it, you should try to select the correct answer. If answer will be ticked, for example, in this question, suppose if it is ticked like this, then before putting any pressure, you can see the answer. This will make your revision less effective. However, if no answer is provided, that means if no answer is ticked directly, then your brain will try to find out the correct answer. So please understand if something is being done, that is being done for your own benefit. So this Pyrasol is a collaborative project of India and Germany for urban waste management. The idea is to turn the waste in biochar. What is it? It is a charcoal that is produced by the process of pyrolysis. What is pyrolysis? It means the decomposition of material at a very high temperature in a closed environment. Next question is what is the main objective of crypto climate accord? So the main objective is to eliminate GHG emission. What is GHG? It is greenhouse gas. So recently different cryptocurrency organizations came together to form crypto climate accord. Objective is to switch to the renewable energy sources by 2025 and to completely eliminate GHG by 2040. And this CCA that is crypto climate accord is led by three not for profit organization. So what is the name of these three organizations? One is Rocky Mountain Institute. Second is Alliance for Innovative Regulation. And third is Energy Web Foundation. Next question is which country has adopted a new anti espionage? It means anti spy regulation to prevent the foreign infiltration in the key companies. See different countries try to involve their spies in other country through covert operations. Now recently China has drafted a new regulation to prevent foreign infiltration in the key companies and in key organizations. Now recently China was also in news as it launched a robot prototype Neo Zero One and this has been launched in LEO that is low earth orbit. It has been launched with the help of long March 6 rocket and this has been launched to clear the space debris. So these were the most important questions. Now we are going to cover important news events. So first is Nuance. Nuance is an artificial intelligence speech company. So why it was in news? Because recently Microsoft decided to buy it for 19.7 billion dollars. This is the second biggest acquisition by Microsoft after LinkedIn. Microsoft had purchased LinkedIn in 2016. Next is Ingenuity. So it is a helicopter by NASA. Recently it was in news because it became the first aircraft to take powered flight on Mars. Next is Bhumidhar Barman. So recently he was in news because he passed away and he was the former CM of Assam. Apart from him, recently few other personalities passed away. Recently Dr. Subbarao passed away. Dr. Subbarao was well known radiologist. Apart from Dr. Subbarao, recently GVZ Krishnamurti passed away. Mr. Murti was the former election commissioner. In addition to him recently, Charles Gaschak passed away. He was the co-founder of Adobe and he was a key player in the development of PDF format. What is PDF? It is portable document format. Next is Murli Natrajan. So recently RBI approved the appointment, in fact reappointment of Murli Natrajan as the, as the managing director and CEO of DCB Bank. Next is Amazon Sambhav Venture Fund. So this is a venture fund of 250 million dollars. Recently Amazon announced this venture fund to support the SME. What is SME? 
it is small and medium enterprises to support healthcare and to support agriculture enterprises in our country apart from amazon recently one more e-commerce entity was in news it is flipkart so recently flipkart was in news because it partnered with adani group to strengthen the presence of adani group across india next is wanderers kings merchants the story of india through its languages so it is a book by peggy mohan next is the christmas pig so it is a book by jk rowling jk rowling is famous for harry potter series next is the cursed inheritance so it is a book by stupa basu next is techno so techno is a smartphone company recently it was in news because it appointed aishman khurana as the brand ambassador next is united nations national innovative and sustainable supply chain award next is lt foods so lt foods became the first company at global level to be certified with the l3 verification l3 is the highest level of verification by sustainable rice platform in simplest term now this lt foods can use the sustainable rice platform verified logos on the rice packets and last news is related to city group so city group has announced to close its banking operations in 13 countries including india city group is a us based multinational investment bank and financial services company blue nature alliance recently this alliance was in news it is a global partnership and its core partners are conservation international the global environment facility pew charitable trust mindro foundation rob and melani walton foundation so these entities are its core part core partner and the target areas of this alliance are these areas so what is this blue nature alliance first thing first it is a global marine initiative and the objective of this alliance is to protect 5 percent of the world ocean in next 5 years so these are the core partners these are the target areas objective is to protect the world ocean next is indo pacific oceans initiative so recently australia and india launched this indo pacific oceans initiative objective is to support free open and prosperous indo pacific next is united nations economic and social council so three organizations under this council were in news these three organizations are commission on crime prevention and criminal justice second is executive board of Uni- united nations entity for gender equality and empowerment of women third is executive board of world food program so recently these three bodies of united nations economic and social council were in news because india has been elected in all these three bodies by acclamation by acclamation it means india has not been elected through a ballot instead of that it has been elected as owner so india will start its term from 1st of january in 2022 next is miguel diaz canal so recently these two personalities first is miguel diaz canal and second is raul castro were in news both are associated to cuba capital of cuba is havana cuba is a communist country and the head of communist party was raul castro recently he resigned now the president of cuba has took the additional charge as the chief of this communist party that is the first secretary of communist party next is sudarshan sen panel so recently this panel has been constituted by rbi that is reserve bank of india it is a six member panel and it has been constituted to carry out the review of working of arc what is arc it is asset reconstruction companies this panel will be headed by executive director of rbi that is mr sudarshan sen rbi was also in news because of m nasiman so he was a former governor of rbi recently he was in news because he passed away he is known as father of indian banking reforms he was the governor of rbi he was the 13th governor of rbi next is world press freedom index so recently this index was released by rsf that is reporters without borders actually this rsf is a short form in some other language but the full name of organization in english is reporters without borders it is not for profit organization so as per this world press freedom index india is on 142nd position eritrea is on 180th position that is it is on the bottom position the index has been topped by norway norway is followed by finland and 
डेनमार्क नेक्स्ट इज फोर फाइव डबल जीरो करोर एडवांस सो रिसेंटली गवर्नमेंट अप्रूव द फाइनेंशियल रिसोर्स फॉर वैक्सीन प्रोडक्शन एंड दिस हैज बीन अलोकेटेड टू टू कंपनीज वन इज सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया एंड सेकेंड इज भारत बायोटेक सो थ्री थाउजेंड करोर हैज बीन अलोकेटेड टू सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया एंड भारत बायोटेक हैज बीन अलोकेटेड वन फाइव सिक्स सेवन करोर रुपीज दिस मनी इज टू बी गिवन एज एडवांस अगेंस्ट सप्लाईज टिल जुलाई एंड फॉर दिस मनी नो बैंक गारंटी हैज बीन शोर प्लीज नोट दैट दिस मनी हैज बीन अलोकेटेड फ्रॉम द फंड दैट वॉज स्पेसिफाइड फॉर द वैक्सीनेशन बजट नेक्स्ट इज करेंसी वॉच लिस्ट सो रिसेंटली यूएसए पुट इंडिया इन टू द लिस्ट ऑफ करेंसी मैनिपुलेटर्स नाउ इन दिस कंटेक्स फ्यू इश्यूज आर इम्पोर्टेंट फर्स्ट इज दैट मीन्स द फर्स्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑफ यूएसए इज दैट हाई डोलर परचेज स्पेसिफिकली बाई रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया सेकेंड ट्रिगर फॉर दिस इंक्लूजन इज ट्रेड सरप्लस विद यूएसए वॉट इज ट्रेड सरप्लस वेन वी एक्सपोर्ट मोर एंड इम्पोर्ट लेस दिस इज ट्रेड सरप्लस वॉट इज ट्रेड डेफिसिट वेन वी इम्पोर्ट मोर देन export so in case of usa we have trade surplus when that means we export more to usa as compared to our imports and this is approximately of 20 billion dollars and last news is jharkhand mukti morcha so recently it became the first political party to declare the name of electoral bond donors that means to publicly announce or to publicly disclose the name of donors who have donated to the political party through electoral bond method so recently bfsl in collaboration with mastercard launched world's first qr on card program why it is important for example because it is world's first such initiative what is bfsl it is bank of baroda financial solutions limited it is a subsidiary of bank of baroda next is bitx so it is a uae based cryptocurrency exchange why it was in news because recently it became the first cryptocurrency exchange in india to provide investment declaration report for all its investors so it is going to provide investment declaration report and it has become the first such cryptocurrency exchange to do so it is a uae based cryptocurrency exchange next is hambantota port so it is a port in sri lanka recently it was in news because a china bound ship was asked by the sri lankan authorities to leave why because there was a uranium on this ship and uranium is a radioactive material and uranium was available without prior approval that is why the sri lankan authorities asked the ship to leave the ambantota port next is china's belt and road initiative so recently this was in news because australia cancelled the agreement of victoria state to join china's bri initiative see what is the entire issue like we have different states suppose we have odisha now again i am just giving you example to make you understand suppose odisha signed an agreement with china directly now government of india said that odisha cannot sign agreement with another country directly so this is the same scenario victoria is a state in australia and it had signed an agreement with china for belt and road initiative now government of australia said that we are going to cancel it because it is against the foreign policy that is decision of central government of australia is going to override the decision of government of victoria next is atanu chakrabarty so recently rbi approved appointment of mr atanu chakrabarty as the part time chairperson of hd fc bank next is romana sinha sagal so recently romana sinha sagal was in news as she won the nelson mandela world humanitarian award next is climate exchange explained for one and all so this is a ebook recently this ebook was released by akash ransom next is rekha menon so recently ms menon was in news as she became the first women chairperson of nascom what is nascom it is national association of software and services companies so she became the first women chairperson of this nascom on the other hand tcs president krishnan ramanjum is going to be the vice chairperson of nascom next is sambandh fin reserve private limited so it is a odisha based entity and recently it was in news because rbi has issued a show cause notice rbi has issued a show cause notice to this entity prior to cancellation of its license in simplest term rbi has asked this entity that why we should not cancel your license next is hashtag affordableless for gov innovation challenge so it is a challenge by meity that is ministry of electronics and information technology and it is a challenge for 
free and open source software in government next is dividends up to 50 percent so first thing first what is dividend suppose you purchase shares of company abc you purchase shares now at the end of year the company may distribute some of its profit back to its shareholders now again let me oversimplify it suppose you purchased 10 percent share in this company and this company earned 100 rupees as profit now this company decided that we should distribute 30 rupees as this dividend and remaining 70 will be reinvested so this 30 rupee will be distributed back to its stakeholders so how much you are going to get you will get three percentages how much you are going to get you are going to get three rupees because 10 percent is of 30. now this is oversimplification just to make you understand now recently this entire issue was in news because rbi that is reserve bank of india has allowed commercial banks to pay dividends on the profits and as per this recent notice by rbi banks may pay dividends up to 50 percent of what they have paid before the covid scenario so you just need to remember this 50 percent and you need to understand the concept of dividend in simplest term dividend is a reward that a company gives to its shareholders jerome so china's first mars rover it is the name of mars rover by china and this rover is on tianwen one mission tianwen one mission is china's mission for mars hope probe is uae's mission for mars uae is united arab emirates next is virafen so recently dcgi that is drug controller journal of india gave a restricted emergency use approval to virafen virafen is by jaidas kedla so this Virafin has been approved for treating the patients who are showing moderate COVID-19 symptoms. And for the development of this Virafin, Jairus Kedla has been supported by DBT. What is DBT? It is Department of Biotechnology and BIRAC. What is BIRAC? It is Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council. So this BIRAC is under Department of Biotechnology. Department of Biotechnology is under Ministry of Science and technology. Jairus Kedla is a pharmaceutical company and the headquarters of this company is in Ahmedabad and Ahmedabad is in Gujarat. Recently Gujarat was in news as it renamed Dragon Fruit. So the new name of this fruit is Kamalam. Next news is related to INC that is Indian National Congress. So recently the Congress party decided to launch its own digital media platform. It is named as INC TV and it started functioning from the National Panchayati Raj Day. This National Panchayati Raj Day was celebrated on 24th of April because the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act became effective or it came into force on 24th of April. Now answer in comment books who was the Prime Minister of India when this 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act was enacted. Last is storage of payment system data. So RBI issues directions or regulations for the storage of payment system data. Now, in this context, there is a term data localization. What does this mean? It means the data of that particular country is to be stored within that country. Suppose our data, that means if the data of users of India is stored within India, that means it is stored in the servers in India, then it is data localization. So RBI issue directives to make sure that all the payment system providers store their data of payment systems in India only. Recently, RBI imposed restrictions on certain entities because of the violation of data localization norms. So, two entities were in use because of this restriction. One is American Express and second is Diners Club. So, RBI has imposed restrictions on these two entities, adding new customers to the card network from 1st of May. Why it was done? Because they did not follow the RBI directive on storage of payment system data the key goal of this directive is to make sure that the data of users of india is stored in the servers in india itself cricketer ravinder jadeja he has been appointed as the brand ambassador of a6 it is a japanese sports company next is workers memorial day so it was observed on 28th of april and it is also known as international commemoration day for dead and injured workers the theme was health and safety is a fundamental workers right next is whereabouts so this is the name of novel and author is jumpa 
Lahiri. Next is Shivalik Small Finance Bank. So this bank is in news because recently it started operations. Now what is so special about it? First thing first, it is the first urban cooperative bank in India to receive the license to operate as small finance bank. That is why it is important and the headquarters is in Uttar Pradesh. Next is National Commodity and Derivatives Exchange Limited. So recently Arun Raste has been appointed as the MD and CEO of National Commodity and Derivative Exchange Limited. Next is Amit Banerjee. So recently Mr. Banerjee was selected as the CMD of BEML. What is BEML? It is Bharat Earth Movers Limited. The headquarters of BEML is in Bengaluru. Recently, Mr. Amit Banerjee has been appointed as the CMD of BEML. Please note that the selection was done by PESB, that is Public Enterprises Selection Board. Answer in comment books, who is the chairperson of PESB? Next is India's first video-based wealth community. So this has been launched by Paytm. And last is related to Python 5. So this Python 5 is air-to-air -air missile. Air-to-air -air means this missile will be launched from air and it is going to hit the target in air itself. On the other hand, if it is from ground to air or surface to air, then it will be launched from surface and then it is going to hit the target in air. If it is ground to ground or surface to surface, then it will be launched from surface. It is going to hit the target at surface itself. Okay, so Python 5 was in use as recently DRDO conducted successful trial for this missile. And now it has been added to LCA Tejas. What is LC? It is light combat aircraft. Python 5 is a fifth generation missile and it has been built by Rafale Advanced Defense Systems. It is a defense manufacturer of Israel. Domestically, that means in Israel, it is known as, that means this missile in Israel is known as Shafir. India's first 3D printed house. So this is at IIT Madras. Recently, Union Finance Minister inaugurated the first 3D printed house at IIT Madras. Now, in the context of 3D printing, there is a term additive manufacturing. Answer in comment box. Last year, which ministry had released national strategy for additive manufacturing? Next is IA 2030. IA stands for immunization as in the 2030. So it has been launched by WHO, that is World Health Organization, Gavi, that is Global Vaccine Alliance and UNICEF and it has been titled as the global strategy to leave no one behind. Next is Kriti Karanth. So recently Dr. Kriti Karanth became the first Indian woman and first Asian as well. First Asian woman to win Wild Innovator Award. This award is given by Wild Elements Foundation. Next is driverless car on roads. So recently UK that is United Kingdom was in news as it has become the first country to announce regulation for the use of driverless car or self-driving car at low speed. Next is first indigenous vaccine for fish. So we have a central institute of brackish aquaculture and this institute is situated in Chennai. Recently this institute has developed the indigenous vaccine for viral nervous necrosis. So this viral nerval necrosis disease affect the fish and it is caused by betanoda virus so now an indigenous vaccine has been developed for this and the name of this vaccine is nodavac r this vaccine has been developed by chennai based central institute of brackish aquaculture last is ayushman bharat divas so 30th of april is celebrated as ayushman bharat divas on the other hand 29th of april was celebrated as International Dance Day. So these were the most important news events. Now get ready for the test. Please make sure you attempt the test without pausing the timer.
Thank you and that's all for the day.